And we are broadcasting live. Welcome to On the Black Chair. We have a couple of uh, um, technology incidents here with, with Mark and me, and especially me, I think. <laughs> Mark, you don't like um, technology, Mark, right? I'm, I'm not a big fan. Um, I'm sure there's nothing <laughs> wrong with technology, and I'm sure the fault is all on my side. But it's not. I, have a, I have a history of breaking electronic thing electronic things with my aura with my energy i i'm i've lost count of how many kettles i go through i've welded washing machine drums that's only an annoyance but washing machines can be expensive okay yes yeah, freezers nice. ice over things I, I don't i'm probably going to jinx this i don't break televisions okay that's, that's good the, and that that is a very good thing but anything else yeah. Is fair game, and it's just it's the energy that comes off. If it's not being conducted correctly, or or if I if I get mildly stressed or my my mood swings and it does, uh, then then things get broken. So technology well, and I don't gonna, get on. We're gonna get uh we're gonna take very good care of you because we don't want yeah. anything like that to happen. <laughs> it's it's so, all in your hands. That that's right. So no, it's it's in both our hands. It's fine. We're we're having we're we're gonna have a wonderful time. So we're this is how long this is what, the fourth time that we're doing this? I think this could be the fifth time. The I think fifth? we had yeah. well, we had two in two thousand and ten and then uh 2011, I believe we had one, and yeah. last year we, we we spoke last year. Uh, but it's it's been a while. It's been over a year, I believe. Yes, it has been over a year, so and um, I just wanna I I just wanted to have a little perspective here. Now, the other thing that uh, I want to talk to um, uh, to our viewers right now, we have seven mm -hmm. viewers right now. This is live, guys. If you want to, and girls, if you want to um, ask a question, you will have a little link there that says ask. A question. Um, it's kind of obvious. So you just click on that, write your question in, ask the question, and we will see that I will see the question. So as the questions come up, uh, I think that there was uh, what was the name, Mark, that I just mentioned before? Daniel. 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 Daniel I saw. So I saw your little hello. So it's working. Um, and so what, what happens here, it's sudden, sometimes people have uh, very similar questions. For instance, some, some, someone in, I don't know, a part of the world might have a question for Mark, and, and some, people, some other people have the same question, and um, what you have to do is that you don't need to repeat the question, you just plus that question. There's a plus little a one plus thing and uh, of course we will see how many pluses the question has and, and that tells us that you really need to be answered. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> so, that'll be the pressing question. That's a, that's a good thing. So uh, ask away, you know that you can ask questions. Um, the questions will be time stamped uh, on the time that we are going to uh, uh, answer them. So after this is recorded, I just wanted to you know, explain a little bit the technicalities here. After yeah, this is recorded, um, it will be an index of all of the questions that were actually answered in the show live. And um, if you click on that question, uh, the the video will jump to that place exactly where Mark was um, answering the question. So it's a Fantastic. really neat, neat um, thing. So, Mark, uh, <laughs> so I know <laughs> that you have been working very hard. Um, yes. In uh, a new series of books, and and we're going to talk about on this show. We're going to talk about um, the three, the 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 first three, as I call yeah. them. But um, but uh, we're we're going to do another show with you after the first yes, yes. the other series come out. So it's the Altar of Sacrifice. It's very nice. Um, it's a new series of, of books, and we're going to talk about that. Um, but uh, what have been happening with Mark Allen Smith? It has been work, 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 followed by a little bit more work, and then on the time that I've had off, I've worked. <laughs> I, I've, I've even, I mean, not to say that I haven't had time off, but since uh, the release of The Scorpion God, I have worked on The Altar of Sacrifice and the book following it. Um, yeah. And I, I won't get into the title of the fifth and sixth books until close to the time that we're actually ready to release them. The Altar of Sacrifice itself has been, it's, it's going to be pretty much the same size in content 
uh, give or take, say, 10 pages as the Scorpion God. Uh, but the current coming through that book, it, it's intense. It's, it's a very powerful current. Working on the book, um, and I mean, working the rituals and the knowledge to bring forth the book was both very potent, uh, very enlightening, uh, and very powerful, but also actually working on the book itself. I find that when I, I write the books, when I refine the books, um, at each stage of the process, more of the current comes through and is woven into the book. So, of course, that comes through me. And each of the books, that they're getting, um, the current is getting thicker, it's getting denser, it's becoming more powerful as the layers of the primal craft are being peeled away for the people that want to work through this yeah. And, and walk this path of flame and because of the nature of the work because it's a work of sacrifice and because of the nature of what's being revealed and returned and it's a lot of knowledge that has been lost for a long time um, now some of the knowledge is, is uh, knowledge that's uh, I would say genuine history of the primal art that needs to be returned because it's part of our heritage mm -hmm. so there are there are some very bloody intense and powerful rites uh, and some of them in the later books stray into the realms of human sacrifice. It's not suggested that people actually go and practice that. It's because it's part of our heritage that they brought forward. The altar of sacrifice itself is slightly different. It's probably going to be the largest of, of uh, it's certainly going to be the largest of the first two. The third book I'm not sure about because I haven't written that one yet. I have to, <laughs> yeah. to extract all of that from the notes process. But the altar of sacrifice at Weaving the current within that, um, I have to say, it's the first book where I've had to take timeouts. I um, I work uh, at a head down, charge forward pace. I work at the same pace that I worked in the military in the parachute regiment, because that's how I've always got things done. I'm I'm very obsessive. I'm very driven. I'm I'm very dedicated and devoted to Hakate. Mm -hmm. But I was warned uh, by Hakate herself and by a third party which came through by way of an intuition, it was actually my partner, it's very intuitive, and both parties said, you know, with the altar sacrifice, you are going to need to take a time out here and there. You will not accomplish this book, weaving the power and the current in, in the way that you accomplished Queen of Hell, the Red King, and the Scorpion God, and if you try, and you don't listen to the advice that's being brought forward to you now, you will burn yourself out. And in actual fact, in, in the summer, I have... Uh, some outdoor hobbies that are nothing to do with the temple, nothing to do with the, the mountains. Uh, they're, they're quite mundane and they keep me fixed in the outdoors and, fi and fixed on the mundane sphere, the, the balance to the, in, the intense spiritual uh, and possession work and the ritual work that I do. I had to, to give all of those up. There was no getting up um, uh, early mornings on Saturdays and Sundays, which, which would be a rest day from, from the working on the book. Uh, actually, there was no getting up on Saturdays and Sundays until the afternoon, purely because in the summer with the, uh, the work on this book, weaving the current in and putting it all together and refining it, and at every stage, the, the current is woven in deeper. It's like putting together a carpet, a, a different thread, a different weave, a different cross pattern. And, it, of course, it all comes through me. Uh, I hit exhaustion point, and, and oh, I had to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had to take a a time out. I took a couple of weeks at the back end of last year, yes. because I I I still and always will write the books longhand. I have um, they're not you know they're not particularly artistic. They're they're huge notebooks and they're bound together um, with uh, cord with red cord and string. And they're well all of the ones that are published and the altar of sacrifice now are are covered in blood some of it mine some of it not mine to empower the original text but i write everything by hand so the completion of of writing the altar of sacrifice was was last year at the back end of last year i think at the end of november and i took between 2 and 3 weeks off i just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i just crawled into a cave somewhere metaphorically yeah. and, and <coughs> just rested let me ask you something, and this is very interesting because you know I've I've been with uh, you know uh, seeing you evolving in yeah. this um, you know uh, retrieving this this uh, this current uh, over the past few years, and and it's really interesting because it, it really is you know the first interview, and there's a lot of people who asks you know oh I want to you know when you're going to interview Mark again, and you know there's always nice. a huge following of yeah. Mark Allen Smith and, and uh, the Primal Craft. But um, the, the thing that I want you to tell me is that now looking back now, and this is, this is kind of like something like that. This is a show yes. where we look back into that okay. first three books. Um, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and and looking back, I mean, how would you define now? I mean, do you still define the same way uh, the, the beginnings, these three books, what came through, the same way that you defined it when you published, for instance, the first one, which was Queen of Hell? I mean, do, do you still define it that way? Or somehow all of this work that you have uh, end up with, the three books, and this weaving of the retrieving of this no, n new gnosis that you are doing right now makes you explain it differently? I define it the same, but the further I go, um, the more the path broadens before me yeah. with more strands and streams of this current of fire that, that's coming through and, and this primal knowledge that I'm bringing back. Therefore, it's giving me a greater scope. I think the best way to answer that question is to initially describe how I, I spoke to you the other day and I said to you that I found Hecate to be a far superior chess player than myself. Yeah. And I was referring to her ability to coerce, seduce, and, and when necessary, manipulate or place me in a position where I will do certain types of work. Now, initially, I was never going to teach people. I, I was, I've always worked this, um, th these strands and, and worked this current and worked with Hikate, even before I, I really understood what Hikate, who and what Hikate was, mm -hmm. when it was simply the dark goddess in, in, in early days. And obviously, as I've grown, as I've matured, as I've had experiences in the military, as I've had experiences as an adult, and I've become stronger, then then I've been more has been open to me, and at the rate at which I work, which I said it's obsessive, it, it's, it's driven, then more has been brought through, and I've grown stronger and brought more strands of the current back. But uh, initially, my dream and my my initial goal was to bring forth some experiences which were encouraged by, by some people to, to write them down and this was all these were all people that Hecate brought to me or, or brought myself to them brought us together it was all part of her greater picture and this includes incorporates the teaching of Lucifer of Belial of mm -hmm. Sepharans yeah. um, but initially the idea was that I shall write Hecate's book I will bring forth this knowledge I will open a pathway I will do this and then of course with the right of the phoenix, which is a, a, a very uh, high-velocity ritual, it, it's incredibly powerful in the realms of catapulting people into the abyss. I, I, would, I would not say crossing the abyss because that depends on the individual. And mm -hmm. while um, I digress slightly now, I would like to congratulate the people who are listening or who may be listening to this interview at some point in the future that have performed... Uh, the right of the phoenix in the last few years, those successfully, and those, uh, you have my sympathies that are still going through their three to four months or possibly longer, depending on, on the conditions crossing. But to come back to the conversation, the right of the phoenix was the reason I put my details out there in the first place, my, yes. my contact details, and was to advise people and, and to say to people, you know, you're not alone if you hit problems uh, with the, especially the Negredo phase of that particular form of alchemy in the crossing of the abyss and what I didn't realize then that was obviously been part of the greater plan all the way through was that it's expanded into primal craft, it's taken me away from Ixaxar and, and, and Scarlet Imprint and it's, you know, Hecate's plan was to have a, a foundation for her primal witchcraft for this particular current which no doubt was her plan all along but very often uh, with these sorts of things, the gnosis is different. I get that the gnosis in floods and the more I work, the more I get. But the actual plan of how it's going to be put forward, I'm, it's like being in the military. I can sometimes be on a need-to-know basis. So it's, expound, it's expanded in that way. Yes. And very much that's the microcosm and the macrocosm. That The, the book's the same. Uh, Queen of Hell, as we know, it's the first open gateway. And for anyone that's listening to this for the first time that, the books are limited because that's what Hecate wanted. Uh, there are enough um, avenues out there to, to, to get hold of this knowledge one way or another so that people aren't actually limited in, in getting hold of the ritual knowledge. But there we go. Yeah, this is, this is uh, Queen of Hell. 
<laughs> and it's it's a very beautiful book, as you can see. Uh, it has a satin kind of silk uh, cover, and uh, the quality of this is just incredible. And it has a the sigil that it's uh, printed in gold and engraved into the, the the cover of the book. And of course, all of these books, uh, all of the books that you do actually are all individually consecrated. Um, yes, right? they're all... They're but all even the thus. consecration had gone more <laughs> 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 profound. <laughs> yes, the, the consecrations are... complicated of, as the process goes along, right? Yeah. Well, the consecrations have always been um, quite intense anyways because I was given a directive as to how to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I know a, a lot of people consecrate their books, but the, the art in consecrating a book um, as a gateway to its patron or source, such as Queen of Hell is with the Kate, the Red King to Lucifer and the Scorpion God to Belial and in part to Sephirans, but it is Belial's book. He, he's the gatekeeper of that book. Is in consecrating the book individually. So the process is, uh, it's multi- it's multifaceted. It's a manifold process. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Manifold. Yeah. Yeah. It begins with taking, with writing the book uh, handwritten. Now that's not to say that if a book is not handwritten, that it can't be consecrated. Not at all. But the, the way that I was taught and the way I was, the way they insist that I write the books is that the first draft, the first volumes are handwritten. So it's almost like writing the book twice. Yes. But it's also it allows me through the hand, through through the manos and through the through the the ensorcelled flesh to weave more power in. It's different typing it into a computer. Then I have a base and also this is something that's linked to what are essentially pyramids on the inner planes. As you create something like this and you create this manifestation then it builds upon the inner planes and it links to gateways and these gateways through the process of consecration can link to the bodies of the gods. So the first process is the handwriting, the handwritten book. Yes. Then there is the, um, the consecration of the handwritten text and that's done now in the temple uh, of Four Pillars of Fire in the Spanish Mountains and the consecration is done in my own blood and with the altar of sacrifice uh, it was done in sacrificial reptilian blood as well okay mm -hmm. when I get the actual books the books are hand numbered now the first two books uh, the, the, the hand numbering the actual numbers of the books was done by uh, Anina from Ixaxa who has yeah. beautiful calligraphic handwriting and I don't. I, she I'm, does, she does. She, can, she does. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have the artistic skills of Anina or, or Andrew Chumbly. I just I do try my best to write with a nibbed pen <laughs> but the books are, are hand... <sighs> Let me just show the calligraphy. It's really really neat. Um, yes, that's Anina's handwriting. You can tell the difference. It's much neater than mine. I'm getting better. When I, well, actually when I, when I write or draw in possession it's actually it's quite neat. By comparison to my by comparison to my normal handwriting, um, the books are hand numbered and then they are consecrated on mass. So you have 999 books yes. consecrated together. Now this is done in incense. It's done in a in a sealed vortex and it's done with the gateways of the demon princes cross conjoined across the books and in possession. Okay, that's me calling in. I will call all four, what I call the big four of the gods of the trident, Sephirans, Belial, Lucifer and Decate, but the patron of the book takes command of the flesh through the gates of the soul and their power and their current is ensorcelled first and foremost w within that. I then consecrate the books individually. Now within all of this you have things like ink is, uh, is blessed and consecrated with the deluxe books yeah. the ink is ensorcelled uh, with my own blood. Now I do get a lot of people asking how how I draw blood and I actually send a lot of people away and go you know you're actually asking the wrong person because I, I'm not very medical about this. I cut. I use a very sharp blade and I cut but the cutting for me is part of the sacrificial process opening my own flesh so I don't lance I cut and you have yeah. to be careful with that because I've had to move around my body due to losing the feeling for a short while in my left hand a couple of years ago because I, I use a lot of blood and I cut mm -hmm. a lot so you have to become creative as to where you're cutting but that is part of the process of, of opening the skin and, and spilling your own life force and manifestation that blood mm -hmm. goes into the ink on the deluxe books the actual and main part of the consecration process with these books 
is they are done individually and it takes me no less than one week and um, when I consecrated the Scorpion God I live in a, a very large apartment um, in the Costa del Sol uh, I'm actually you know we're very fortunate to live on the beach but we live in a community and the gentleman very nice gentleman from upstairs came down and knocked on the door and asked if there was a fire because the incense was going up <laughs> into the apartment it was dragon's blood incense which isn't the um, mm -hmm. it isn't the sweetest of fragrances it's no. strong and it's bitter for, and yes and so, and it has a lot an, of smoke. I mean, it's just very smoky. Well, my eyes were streaming. I mm. I actually end up uh, looking like I don't know. I've been trimming marijuana or something at the end of the eight days because my <laughs> hands are covered in resin. They're covered in in, in incense. My yes. skin goes a yellow color. My eyes go jaundiced. I'm actually quite ill at the end of it because I'm using an intense amount of energy uh, in possession. And, and sometimes. <clears throat> in the consecration of the books, at one stage, about midway through the Scorpion God, I had to ask Belial to actually increase the the energy level because I, you're doing ten hour days, yeah. and it's yeah. non-stop Absolutely. consecrating Absolutely. books. It takes a long time to do these properly, and yeah. the books are opened in consecration, and and each consecration on each book, not always, but it can be different, and it makes you wonder because Belial or Hecate or Lucifer or Sephirans will see where these books are going. I don't know. I'm not that powerful that I can see where each individual book is going to go at the end of its journey. But I am very aware when I'm in possession of the different idiosyncrasies that come through. And I've seen curses go into these books. I've heard them come through my body. I've seen blessings. I've seen huge empowerments that I'm almost mildly envious of. And I, and I do wonder for a very short while before I move on to the next phase, Who's going to get this book? Where's this going? Because the gods and the spirits are bringing through these different idiosyncrasies woven within the consecration of each book, and it does it does make you wonder I where think this book do. goes. I, I really do, Mark. I really think that the books will find their own way because you know the thing the thing that it and you did you 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 know this because you said that to me. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I you know uh, let me just say this: uh, mm -hmm. we are receiving the questions from you. Um, it's very interesting because I just saw this uh, happening. As the questions are voted, they go up. So, ah, okay. really cool because uh, there is, there is a, um, a question here uh, that I will respond, but let's just, you know, do this okay. first and kind of, uh, talk, uh, you know, uh, tie it up. Yes, we'll, 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 set some start, we'll set some time aside to answer as, uh, as many, if yes. not all of your questions as we yes. can. Because I, um, I want, there's, uh, you know, uh, this particular um, viewer of this question, um, I think that it's, it's um, I don't know if he actually knows about the, the books and what okay. the books are about, so we, we have to talk about that also. Okay. Um, but what he, um, uh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to the question, so I just wanted to, I, I wanted to tell you that we are receiving the questions, we'll, okay. we, we'll, we'll, we'll be, I mean, and, and, and if you remember some, some question as Mark is talking, type it in. And we will we will type answer it in them, because okay? we'll make time so to answer them. Yes, don't wait until the end or whatever. As you are listening to the show, type your question in, put it in, and then you know let it run because we will answer your questions. So don't don't worry about this. So um, I like this this thing that. Um, and this is not really regular writing. I mean, you're not a writer. <laughs> you're no, more than a writer, of course. And and all of this is done in the normal world of the writers, right? Yes. There is an artistic process that it's very close to magic, but I don't really think that it's even close to this. Uh, this is a person of um, you. You will pers you will give yourself to the literally to the yes. book. And the yes. books have a charge in them that uh, make them alive. So, uh, you know, and this is what we talked about a few years ago. They consecrated as actual gateways. There is, uh, right. so, there are a few people, but there's one in particular who springs to mind, and it's a lady who lives in the UK. Now, one of the questions that I do get is about the books and the path. That, the books are sequential. Yes. Okay. However, um, someone who has already crossed the abyss. The thing of, with the books is that there is a certain element, what could be called, I guess if you were looking at, uh, I know I don't want to 
get pulled up for my terminology, but if you're looking at the older terminology of Grant or some of the Thelemic stuff, the, the precious stones, the crowns of divinity, as they're described within the books, each book leads uh, in sequence through the performance of enough of the rituals. With Queen of Hell, it tends to be the alignment of the self within Queen of Hell through the right of the torchbearer. Queen of Hell is designed for people to come in at a very basic level, a medium level, or even an advanced level. The rites of the latter part of the book, which is called the Book of the Inner Sanctum, are the Toad Rite, the Legion of Night, um, the Phoenix Rite. The Toad Rite is something that may or may not be performed. Uh, it's something that needs to be applied for. It's very different w within the Primal Craft to those outside of it. So to pick up a toad right and walk into the current of primal craft and and, um, and to initiate that would be a mistake. And I've seen one person do that and not listen clearly to Hecate's instructions. And he was getting Hecate's instructions, and his life took a little bit of a uh, an impact with a wrecking ball. He he got past, uh, kudos to the gentleman. He got past it and continued on the path because he realised that he'd wandered into a path of sacrifice that he was not invited into. With the toad right in there, it has to. It's an invitation. But I also seen people have toads presented in the middle of the city on their doorstep, dead or dying, and then emailed me. And th I mean, these are people that are very immersed in the primal craft, and and they're asking me, "What do you think?" And my my reply is that, "Well, what do you think?" <laughs> uh, I would say that you're being invited through an open doorway. The toad right will initiate the crossing of the abyss if performed correctly. That's the whole point. Uh, that's what that ritual is all about, and it also gives a lot of um, earthy. Uh, um, quite bloody rituals uh, and, and knowledge that, that come as an aside or an extra to certain things. The, the Phoenix Rite uh, performed correctly is, is the perfection uh, and of the merging of the currents of Hecate and Lucifer at the level of the soul. Mm -hmm. It is also um, removing all armor, removing all barriers, and, and there's a formula, the formula of the imperfect circle. Basically, you're breaking, tearing the aura, breaking the circle. It will be repaired afterwards upon successful completion, but you're stepping beyond the boundaries of a ceremonial magical circle in the full manifested presence of Lucifer and Tecate and, and merging with the two of them and then conjoining with them, and this is very important, in sexual magic. The purpose is to allow each one to control either of the serpents that dwell within the soul and the flesh known as the Kundalini and carry them to their absolute height beyond that which the human ecstasy is capable of carrying which ejects the soul out of the body and in short what it does is it catapults the soul up the night side of the middle, middle pillar um, which can actually uh, people, some people can take it in the stripes, some people find it traumatic. It depends, and the phoenix right will tailor itself. The phoenix will tailor the right to the individual. I clearly had a lot of work and a lot of rough edges that needed um, filing away because it, it knocked the granny out of me, the phoenix right. It demolished yeah. half of my life, restructured it, uh, and in total alignment with this path. The, the last ritual in the Queen of Hell is the crowning through the performance. Uh, the, the Legion of Night and the Phoenix are essential to complete the work in Queen of Hell. Now some people, some very advanced people, will be able to walk through that. There will be people who have crossed the abyss and, and merged across the other side with whichever particular godhead that will be able to walk right into the end of Queen of Hell. I always say to people, if you are going to pursue the path of flames and undertake the primal current eternally at the level of the soul, and that's what this work is, mm -hmm. then perform the rituals at the end of Queen of Hell. Um, but let me ask you something, Mark. You're you're mm -hmm. you're doing a beautiful description of of, of okay. what really this is about. Um, you had contact with um, other works of Ecate. I mean, not your own, but you yes. know, other works of other people all over the world. And um, you participated in um, in a wonderful book by uh, Avalonia. Um, her sacred fires. Her sacred fires. And, book, know, yes. So it's 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 uh, many people have a v um, this this very con very deep connection to Ecate, yes. but in different ways. Indeed, um, <clears throat> there right. are many strands to 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 the to the, the path That's of Ecate right. and many different paths. That's the, right. So this yeah. is not this is not when people say, "Oh, you know Ecate." Well. Um, I know a 
current of Ecate work from Europe, which, you know, from from Tracia and that's yeah. in Iberia. So I know that current, which is not this new age kind of concept of Ecate being the crone and no. you know, nothing like that. No. Um, it's pretty much alive. Uh, it really can torn you apart, uh, put it together, and torn you apart again, and put it together again. So it's really something very strong. And so, when people hear you talk, we need to define the current because we need people to know that this is not. Um, Let me do that for you now. Then. All right. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> The role that I was given within this is to bring forward, um, I'll use the word witchcraft, but let's also use spiritual evolution. Let's use the lost stellar wisdom, um, or the starry wisdom, if you want to coin uh, phrases from certain other, for, uh, other books and pantheons. It's the same thing. Let's uh, antedate the Egyptian dynasties when Hecate was first worshipped in, in her many forms with many different names as the supreme dark goddess. The role that I've been given is to return the current of the primal witchcraft of Hecate. Hecate, as we know, is very powerful. She's incredibly multifaceted. And I always say to people, imagine the, the magnitude of a being such as Hecate or Belial or Lucifer or Sepharans. Imagine the mind of a god and, and then understand why with this path you are given sequential works, you are given a path that continues and broadens as you go because if that godhead was to merge with you completely with all of their power it would destroy not only your mind and your flesh but your soul because imagine the mind of a goddess capable if she so choose to have a separate conversation with all 6.5 billion people on this planet in the one moment because gods can do that. How many people could be praying to Hecate now? If you and I, for instance, were involved in a ritual and working with Hecate, how many other people around the world will be working separate rituals, separate conversations, separate works, and she will be present at all, all those facets? Even if we were all working with the same facet, she's capable of being there. So it's, I always look at it that way, and I always tell people to look at it that way, because to look at Hecate that way is to understand the magnitude of this being and how powerful she is. So she has many facets, and there are many paths to the throne of Hecate. However, there are many that are complete, or many that are established, and there are a few with dead ends, and that's to do with more to do with the people that have brought them forward, or perhaps not brought genuine paths forward. What is missing is the primal path. A lot of the knowledge and a lot of the things that were, for instance, uh, and it's a, a well-used example that I have, the burning of the Alexandrian libraries and, and various other instances like that where knowledge has been destroyed. Um, I mean, the last two to 4,000 years, it's a, it's a blink of an eye. Let's go back 35,000 years. Let's go back, you know, before the watermarks on the Sphinx, which I think, I did, and I'm not a historian, uh, maybe nine, ten, thirteen thousand years before, you know, the Egyptian dynasties. Let's go back, you know, to maybe thirty-eight thousand years, forty thousand years, because we, we weren't, not everyone on the planet was living in caves and, and drawing on the walls. There were some very sophisticated civilizations. Still the most spiritually complete and powerful civilization and the most spiritually complete and the, the un- bridged path before the abyss was placed in our soul path before it was placed in the soul of man and the reason it was placed there was because there was so much power so much knowledge that we led ourselves as the Atlantean race into corruption therefore the raw form of the supreme dark goddess the raw body upon which although the planets are still there the spiritual structure linking them was more circular Mm -hmm. That's the form of Hecate. Now you see you have we have the tree of life, tree of death. Perhaps not in the Kabbalistic sense, it doesn't matter, but as a formation, as a spiritual path, the body of Lucifer with the abyss in, so that we have to work towards these things. There are barriers, there are bridges that need to be built with our own level of, of knowledge and our own level of power so that we don't destroy ourselves, so that it, there is not too much too soon. Mm -hmm. There will be another fall. 
Uh, we are in, in the at the threshold of the apocalyptic aeon, but that is the fall this time is to do with our greed and the misuse of power. Uh, if anything, we are stunted on the side of spiritual power. We are stagnant. So there are many reasons why this path is being brought back, but within this, the current, the path, and this aspect of Hecate, it is the aspect of the Supreme Dark Goddess and her kin that was followed. Perhaps the names were the same, perhaps the names were, the dif were different, depending on whereabouts in the world you were. One of the things that we've done in Queen of Hell is to, and it's it's almost gone under the radar, there's a, uh, it's not a great word, reformation between ceremonial magic and witchcraft. If you look closely at the evocation techniques in Queen of Hell, taking away the sigil torturing and the chain rattling, you will see that the evocation is actually quite strong on the ceremonial magic side, but it is there with the witchcraft. Um, before the grimoires, before this witchcraft before what is called, you know, traditional witchcraft in medieval times, if we go back thousands and thousands of years to what I would call the first faith of freedom, when we had all of that stellar wisdom. Mm -hmm. And you'll, feel, you'll see in, in these three books, there is a lot of, um, particularly in the Red King and the Scorpion God, it's starting to seep through and we'll get more of it, the lost stellar wisdom that's being brought back. So we've got a lot of rights, we've got a lot of sacrifice, we've got a lot of things that are in the earth with the spirits of the place, but we've lost a lot of our stellar gnosis with the fall of the Atlantean um, civilizations and what was fragmented from there fueled the, the full gnosis of the Egyptian civilizations. But it's why you can see with the ancient text and the ancient civilized from Egypt and, and, and some of the African tribes, you can see the names might be different, the, 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 the images are very similar, the ethos is very similar, okay? Mm -hmm. But the, the names and perhaps the, the appearance of the gods to man in their own image might be slightly different, but there is so much synchronicity because it all comes pretty much from one source that was fragmented at the first fall. So that's the purpose of the, of the primal current, and it, it is different. I... I had a f there were a few ripples with the um, and no disrespect meant um, with the Wiccan community. I had people writing to me that this is not Hecate as I see her, and I thought, well, depending <laughs> on which aspect of Hecate you're following, no, it's not. It's not supposed to be. I have had people point out, well, this is mythologically incorrect to, uh, when they're comparing it to the Hellenic aspects. Okay, it isn't. Um, taken from mythology. I, I think everyone who knows me now knows that I'm certainly no historian, but that has worked and may have been one of the reasons why she chose me for this to my advantage. I am not uh, challenged by history. I'm not led by history. I work direct through the inner planes. The knowledge that's being brought back, it isn't there. It was lost. It was destroyed either at the fall, it's been lost in the sands of Egypt, it's been burned in, in great libraries as paternal solar cults uh, and their crude masters have sought to eradicate the cults of the goddess, you know, first the stellar and then the lunar and, and bring about the, these other cults that are, that are more like um, franchises and more money based and more power based than actual, you know, genuinely rooted in spiritual knowledge. I won't sling any more mud but we know where I'm aiming. Yeah. Um, that was the purpose to, of, of, was to bring this back. So when someone, I have had someone say to me, it's, it's actually written somewhere, that uh, it's, it's not even close to accurate concerning mythology. It's not supposed to be. Mythology is the quota of legends and myths that have survived over the course of time and may well have been rewritten. Therefore, this isn't based on Hellenic mythology. It's not based on Macedonian, Thracian mythology. It's taken direct from direct contact with the Kate. It's what she once brought back and that's what I'm doing and it's also why sometimes that I have performed rites and I've done things that without without prompting without coercion and uh, a little bit of bartering sometimes and sometimes insistence on her part practices that may have gone against the grain personally for me that I will have indulged in because that's my devotion to Hecate mm -hmm. I love her first and foremost above and beyond all others I have a very understanding partner, which is just as well. <laughs> Kate comes first. No, I, I, it's very interesting to hear you talk because um, 
when you say that those people are kind of like, oh, this is not, you know, um, accurate. It's because it challenges the, the views. It's it's not it's not a slight to those people. Depending on 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 how they take my response to them, in in which case, you know, I will always say you can take a horse to water. You can't make it drink. And That's if right. people are working certain paths and they are connected with the cate in a certain aspect, then I have no issue with that, and I'm sure the Queen of Hell has no issue with that. But this knowledge has, has come forth and it's been brought forth and it's been brought back through direct contact, in which case it actually has made some people unhappy. I had one gentleman in America write something um, he, he was very informal about how Smith makes a lot of people unhappy with his writings and they're far more satanic than he would care to admit and uh, and my reply to that was well you know I kind of questioned the relevance of the words he was questioning the fact that it, it, it wanders into the bloody and the dark but then are we to deny that people were actually sacrificed to Hecate not just black dogs that, that men are we to deny that um, Due to her massive feminine power, some men in, in you know aeons past uh, committed ritual castration on, on the nights of her power uh, in dedication to her and things like that. Hecate doesn't want that forgotten. And while I'm not advocating human sacrifice, I am advocating that we do not forget our heritage because she hasn't changed. We have. Hecate hasn't changed. So the cakes and the flowers... I. I had a, a visitor, I digress, come to Spain to do some work in the temple and this person who was erring on the, the, the darker side of paths because that's the path that they had followed and they had come to work with the Cate but with also with Belial, Lucifer and Sepharans said, you you put flowers on your altars? And I went, yeah, I do. And I got this funny look and I went, have you ever seen uh, even a spirit such as Belial, a god such as Belial, manifest through a huge bouquet of red flowers, the manifestation, because they are, when they're in water, still living, and he's using a living medium, it's solid, and he will come forward from the flowers, I mean, okay, if he wants to manifest solid, he doesn't need any kind of medium, but they're an offering, and provided that, that the agreement with the spirit, I've also had flowers thrown off altars, as I've had incenses and tobaccos and things cast off altars, the Moares are very, of the, all the spirits that I have altars for in the house, the three girls the three dark fates, they are the most particular. If something does not sit well, it is ejected from that particular cupboard where the altar is and it lands on the floor. Um, but there are lots of different offerings, not lots of different... So, you know, flowers, cakes, blood. My altars in my house, they're not... Um, I don't... My personal belief is that I don't showcase my altars, which is why none of you will see any pictures of them on the net or anything like that. I, I don't do that. But they are working altars, so they are not like... Um, I see some of these altars that the people make on the net, on the web, and they put pictures up, and I think, that's amazing. Uh, if you look at, say, Richard Dirks or, or um, uh, Jeff Cullen, uh, their altars are, are just stunning. Well, my altars are nice, but they are, they're different. And they're actually, some of them are quite dusty, and you've got blood dripping down these sigils. And then we have an indoor temple, and obviously the temple of four pillars of fire in the mountains. The temple in the mountains, the altars, uh, there are no statues. Everything there is natural. They're closer to something you might see in Haiti with the blood running down the stone and, and things like that, because that's the nature of the work there. It's, yeah, it's yeah. very primal. It is, it is. Let me just ask you one thing, because... Um, yes. There is one question here. I'm going to select it. Please do. Um, I'm going to select this. Uh, it's 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 actually about total, uh, he says, total reference to Ecate. How can we purchase this book, or will you will po post this later? Thank you. So it, he, he says that I'm rushing, and I kind of, you know. So um, these books are very peculiar because they are limited editions. And, and as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, these three books are already sold out. I mean, they, they just, they were delivered. This, they were, you know, they were sent yeah. away, right? Um, so how they, how did the people now can go okay. about this? I get, I get questioned, and I also, I, there's, there's the odd, um, <laughs> there's the odd slighting arrow comes whizzing past me in Crossfire, uh, where people point out, uh, some people don't agree with the fact that the books are limited. The first thing that I would say, and I will answer all of this in full so people understand how they can get hold of this knowledge. Please understand, okay, that if it was a, a matter of finance, 
it's far more lucrative for me to pub put out a second publication of Queen of Hell. It, it will sell out very quickly. I can't, I won't. It was made very clear to me that there will be 999 consecrated gateways as direct links, consecrated as direct links to Hecate. Now, what I was going to say earlier was that there is a lady in, in the UK and she doesn't actually work ritually through the books. She uses the books as gateways and goes wandering through them and works with them and she'll use one book or she'll use a combination of books depending on what she's doing and how she wants to do it. So the books were, were consecrated as gateways. Something that's been picked up on um, by uh, the author Stephen Sennett when handling Queen of Hell, his quote unquote, uh, he believes it acts as a direct conduit to the source, Hecate herself. Uh, there's a gentleman in America who uh, took several occult books out into the countryside. Uh, I, I won't name the others because it's it's not appropriate. Um, and he took the Trident books, the Trident trilogy out, and he doused the energy at different levels from them. And the contrast was stark. Some were, were just giving little indications in the Trident trilogy. The, the, it was shaking his sticks all over. He went back the following day when the books obviously were in his house and he doused the areas where the books had been placed and there were still vortices of energy but only where the Trident books had been placed, not where the other books had been placed, which I would like to attribute to the fact that they are correctly consecrated as gateways to their patrons. Now, that was Hecate's will and it remains Hecate's will. We live in an age one of the challenges put before me with the gods is that we live in an age where people believe that, well, I want it now, I hit the order key, and I have it now. And it's an age fueled by greed. Our ego and our appetite has been sharpened to a ridiculous degree that we have a false sense of our own importance and power, and which is why we're destroying this planet. Okay, so we've lost, we've forgotten the days when people... And I'm talking, you know, centuries or even millennia ago, where there will be one handwritten book. And to bring this knowledge to other people, you know, people would walk across continents and bury their families and their loved ones along the way. People would biblically or, or in legend climb mountains and, and scratch things out on bloodied fingertips. One of the things, that, one of the reasons that the path of flame is in, in its entirety that leads at the end of the Scorpion God to the final initiation of the soul. Uh, of man in fire, which is a free will casting of the soul in judgment into Lucifer's fire. Judged positive, then the soul is carried at a spiritual level to uh, an evolution beyond that of, let's call it, the wheel of the preordained path of spiritual destiny and evolution of man. It's taken to a higher level. What I would call the, 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 the God soul, it, it's basically, if you imagine crossing the abyss as the first big leap, well, this would be several leaps beyond that. And the keys and the crowns and the paths and everything that one needs is within the three books. That The reason that they're spread within the three books is because that's what Hecate wants. Uh, people who are devoted. Uh, is a metaphor, although, um, well, yes, is a metaphor, but sometimes it does it has occasionally felt like it's not that metaphoric. With devotion, what she wants is devotion. That, I have nothing against people that work eclectically. There are a lot of people who work with, with my stuff and they work uh, alongside other things. But if you're going to walk to the, the path of Hecate and you wish to walk eternally to the realm of her throne, she may wish to see if you will crawl across hot coals for her. Therefore, you can't order this at the tap of a key or, or a fingertip. And it's about work. It's about pilgrimage. It's about bringing these three books together. That said, that said, um, the second-hand book market, I know, is it's quite a vile place, and it's full of great white sharks who sell my books. Uh, and I have a, I have an anti-club of, uh, I probably have an anti-club of a few occultists because I'm very blunt, but I have an anti-club of eBay sellers who <laughs> don't don't like me because they've been told to naff off, uh, and I do as I, as best I can eradicate them, so that they don't hawk the books, uh, and so, you know some person who may have just discovered this work doesn't realize that perhaps the Scorpion God is the only one that's still in print. I have the Scorpion God. They can purchase it from me at Primal Craft. Um, they may end up, because it's on eBay, the Scorpion God. I've seen it on eBay for like 300 bucks. It's yeah. in print for 60 euros at Primal Craft. That's why I get rid of the eBay sellers. And they will sit, they will take 
as many books as I will sell them. So I don't sell them any, um, and they will sit on them. And you know, if you want to go via the path of the wallet, then you can excuse yourself by saying, "Well, you know, you can quote that movie, The Nine Gates. All books have a path of their own, and and all of this." But you know, within your heart, that you're selling 20 books to an eBay seller who's going to hoard them, and 20 people are going to get extorted. Yes. So that's why I have an anti-club. I started the anti-club with Xaxa. I'm not alone. They don't like her either, uh, because she stands by her guns and she won't sell to the eBay sellers. So. To counter the problem, um, first of all, I stand by Hecate's word. The books are consecrated gateways, which is why, and they are genuinely talismanic in that. I know that word's been banded around and abused and worn out now, but they, they are talismanic in that. Uh, it's why I won't do mass market paperbacks. I could fund Primal Craft a lot better um, and probably publish more books if I increased the number. It wouldn't go down well with Hecate. It has to be 999. Maybe some later books, there will be even less in number. Uh, I have felt that in, in communication with her. But the Trident trilogy and the ones coming after that, the volumes of the Way of Sacrifice, they must be 999. That's Hecate's will. It's the will of the Trident gods, all four of them. Uh, it's why I won't publish paperbacks. Yes, the knowledge would get out there quicker. There is a but to all of this, so please bear with me. Yes, the knowledge would get out there quicker. I won't publish paperbacks and I won't put out ebooks because if I did that from my perspective, it would just be about the money. So, first and foremost, there are enough PDF pirates out there who've pirated this work and put it on the net. I don't like PDFs of my work. I don't like them being put out there. But I'm not going to get out of my pram about it and get upset because they serve my purpose from the point of view for those of you who are listening to this, if you've missed Queen of Hell and the Red King, no, a PDF is not the same as a book that has been opened as a consecrated gateway to that particular god. There is no comparison. However, if you are meant to succeed in this work and you have that PDF, it will open. The rights will open to you. If you're not, the rights will not open to you. But the same could be said about the books. There are people that have had these books and the rights will not open to them. That is because the path is not for them. Or, you know, it it's about quality, not quantity. The gods want genuinely devoted souls. So if some rock hopper who is a self-serving, egotistical person, uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with a bit of a large ego, but if it's purely self-serving and without any devotion to the gods, you're not going to get much out of this work at all. You may end up giving more than you want to, but you may not get much out of it. If it's meant to open to you, it will. And the same goes for the PDFs. It's why I don't... Um, I have um, a, a very strong legal team behind me, my, basically because my best friend owns a law company in Marbella, so it's not difficult for me to deal with things like that. I haven't approached one PDF uh, station because they are actually unwittingly serving my purpose. And I do get people that write to me, and they say, okay, I've read your work, but I have to confess, Mark, um, I, I've got a PDF and, you know, I'm not sure. And I write back and I say, I say, okay, I always say, right, I don't like PDFs, but I appreciate your honesty, and then I will help the people. There is a but to this. Do not, please, pay for these PDFs. If you're going to take one, take it for free. That's the only grievance that I have. There is a, a certain member of the occult community out there who is strongly linked to a site that I won't give kudos to that is selling PDFs of my work, Chombley's work, even all of Llewellyn's work, um, and, you know, David Rankin, uh, everyone, basically. It would be easier, it would be quicker to list who's not on there. <laughs> yeah. Most of his own. And the, you know, this... This is a bad practice because they're actually charging money for, uh, in a very crafty way, but they're charging money for these PDFs. That I don't agree with. You can yeah. get them out there for free. No, there is another but to all of this that has been set up to help people. What I've done, I will not give people, because I, I fundamentally don't like PDFs, but I accept that if that's the route that you need to go to get the knowledge, then so be it. I'm not going to stop you, and I'm not going to not help you, provided that you're honest with me as to where you got the knowledge. Because sometimes I'll say to people, what number book have you got? And they go, um, well, actually, I have actually read your work, Mark. And I'm like, okay, that tells me what I want to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> when people, people purchasing The Scorpion God, mm -hmm. 
what I've done is I've taken enough of the path out of Queen of Hell. I call it the extract. I've extracted the path because Queen of Hell is very, um, with the books, you don't need the cursing rites to succeed on this path. You don't need um, the, some of the rites out of the Red King to succeed on that. There is a core element within these books that will allow you with enough dedication and devotion uh, and drive in performing these rites in devotion to the gods to succeed and attain that level of spiritual evolution and empowerment. Mm -hmm. I have made the extract already. I, I lie. I pointed out the extract. My partner made it. I, the extract already <laughs> of Queen of Hell. Um, it's my retarded technology skills. Uh, I can't split a PDF, I confess. Um, and so what happens is when someone buys, I won't give it out uh, on a whim. I won't give it out to the... I've given it to a couple and I've stopped doing it. If someone purchases the Scorpion God and they make it clear they don't have Queen of Hell or the Red King, I will give them the extract of Queen of Hell. Everything that they need to succeed, and it's broken down as a course, yeah. and it, there's, I, I, it's free. If they purchase the Scorpion God, I give them the extract of Queen of Hell. They can then go and work that. I will not, however, give them the extract of the Red King until the following year when I can see from their emails and from what they're telling me that they have worked the path, completed the Legion of Night, the Right of the Phoenix, and the Right of the Silver Star at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Because I won't give it out just for reading curiosity. If people are genuine about walking this path, then that's... So next year I'm expecting, it'll only be a few people who've taken the extract, who will work through this, they're going to come to me and go, okay, can I please have the extract of the Red King? <laughs> I haven't made it, I'm making it in December. And, and So that's how I've cured that because Very good. Very good. It, it, it would be financially uh, lucrative, more financially viable. Uh, I, I work against myself in marketing. I work against myself financially. My books, the books themselves are not cheap, no. But I, I'm not the greatest businessman in the world because I'm one of the few who will stand by the instruction that I was given and that is I will not reprint or otherwise republish Queen of Hell. So no ebooks and no paperbacks. I have no issue with people. Um, I have friends such as uh, Mike Jacatelli who who put out the, the, the ebooks and things because they've done that from the start uh, yeah. to get the knowledge out really there. Okay, premise. and that's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was told from the start, no, ebunto, you don't do it. So it was only nine hundred ninety nine of Queen of Hell. I hope that answers the, the, the gentleman's do question. You follow. You do follow the Queen of Hell instructions. You I do. Don't... <laughs> no, you don't. You don't go against a cat. I. No. I. I mentioned the other day there was a ritual. Um, it was a very powerful and a very important ritual. It was a sacrificial ritual, and bearing in mind that I, uh, if I'm honest. I, I do class myself as one of the boys, as in Hecate's fold, because I'm doing her work and it's important work. So I get a certain amount of leeway and a certain amount of slack. And there was this ritual. Look, I'm not saying I wasn't going to perform it. I'd been performing the rituals of sacrifice. This particular ritual, if I'm really honest, it, it went against the grain and I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I was dragging my feet and... Hecate kept coming through, and at one stage there was, a, you know, an eye on solid manifestation with a questioning. And I won't. The terminology is betwixt Hecate and I, but to put it in plain English, it was: uh, Are you trying to prove a point? Uh, do you, ha you know, is there something you want to speak to me about? I have asked you to put this ritual out. In the end. Um, I would have done the ritual, but let's just say I dragged my feet for too long for 11 months, and that's not like me, but it, it, it was a very a very bloody ritual. It was a ritual that I wasn't in a, in a rush to perform, and it was heavy on the heart. It ended with me having a little accident uh, and some injury in which the accident involved a black dog, a black cat, and a very, very powerful and stern manifestation and possession. So I had, I had possession, I had... Bilocational manifestation. Uh, let's just say I got my wrist slapped. Um, I can assure you that shortly after that, that ritual was performed with gusto. <laughs> it's the only time I've ever uh, come close to letting her down, and it, it, it won't be happening again because it, it was. It's what I call a shunt. Yeah. If a, an angel or a demon or a daemon or a god gives you a shunt, uh, their idea of a shunt is 
it's a it's a persuasion it's a reminder of who you serve uh, at the human element it can be a little bit like picking yourself up off the road yes yeah or out of the nearest wall mm -hmm. so no uh, we have a couple of questions for you we have two take one the first one is from Jason uh, heading I'm gonna select that okay so Jason heading uh, is saying hi mark is the hi, Jason. sorry go ahead no, no, I was just saying, hello, Jason. <laughs> no, hello, Jason. Um, so he says, um, hi, Mark. Is the ceremonial methods in your work a reflection of your own personal choice of method, or is it something that comes direct from the gods? Uh, an example, can you work the primal craft in a more shamanic style? Excellent question. Okay. Queen of Hell, out of all of the books, with the exception of um, The Rite of the Phoenix, Jason, is the most flexible of the books because it's the one that it, you're most able to step in and find your own level and an absolute beginner um, w would need to say uh, I, I always advise absolute beginners to go and take mastering witchcraft because although it there has an eclectic element of using the different god names um, vis of his like say 70s or 80s wicker the book itself is an excellent foundation as the first open door and it bridges the gap from total beginner to, to Queen of Hell and, and Houston was excellent you know in, in writing that book I actually class it as a very good book um, with, with more advanced people they're able to find a, a level so you've got people that are coming through from say the shamanic side of the ceremonial magic side to answer your question directly it was given to me to perform that way that one of the things was, and it, it seems, it, in actual fact, in, in retrospect, from my own personal viewpoint, Jason, it seems a small matter now, but there was a time when there was a divide between ceremonial magic and the witchcraft, and that divide was a bit of a gulf. And when you think that, you know, the actual practices before, before say, that the church and whoever got involved, before things had to be hidden within Christianity, and, and before the formation of, of certain grimoires, even the non-Christian ones, okay, and ancient texts, then things were worked in a slightly different way. It's kind of like a, a very basic and, and outer gateway to, to re-merging the witchcraft and what is essentially the ceremonial magic. So the answer to your question is that it's something that I've worked but it was a directive that came from Hecate, both Hecate and Lucifer, that particular directive. It's also um, a method, because Queen of Hell is, is a, an introduction and the first open gateway, the method of, of evocation in that way of, of, so you've got invocation and the possession, it also it shows the external manifestation that, you know, using the triangle in that way, as you know, Jason, I'm sure you know, it, it helps evolve other aspects of the self. It grants you more power and, and it gives you more experience and evolution in that particular area. And the two gel nicely together. So could you approach it from a more shamanic point of view? Yes, you could, as long as you're sure that you will get that experience of external manifestation. Um, not in a bound area. The triangle within Queen of Hell is the, the manifestation triangle for evocation is used purely as a focal point, uh, a set point within the universe, within the temple, within the room, or, or, or within the, the, the wilderness or the forest or wherever you happen to be using it um, on the beach on a couple of occasions for myself, uh, for, the, for the spirit or the god to, to come forth. As long as, whether you're using a triangle or not, if you're getting that external manifestational experience, then there would be no harm in using a little bit of flexibility and not hand-railing the text of Queen of Hell too much. So, in short, yes, you, you can do that from a shamanic point of view. Thank you. That's is this it. what you're talking about, right? Yes, it is, yeah. Well, what you've got, obviously, is, is the dragon biting his tail speaks for itself. It's a representation of the dark circle of the vortex that's cast as the gate of knowledge and death in which the witch or magician will stand and then you have what is essentially the, the classic triangle uh, with slight alterations. Hecate wanted her name as the supreme dark goddess as first among the gods placed at the center and then you have Queen of Hell, Hecate and the, the Tassa Tower is, is both a, a stellar envoy of Hecate and a formula for opening uh, the dark gate of knowledge, the gate of knowledge and death um, and for, for actually casting that particular or creating that particular vortex that you'll work and as some people I guess 
the magicians would describe as the center of the universe, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now does, we haven't. Oh, sorry. Does that answer his question? I think so. Yes. Well, you okay. can't say. We hope so. <laughs> he, he, well, he can type up if he if he needs more detail. Yes. Yes. Him. Yes. Now the other the other question comes from Kevin Paul. And uh, let me select that. Kevin Paul uh, says, concerning the right of the phoenix, um, are the transmutations and elevations of spiritual energy that are initiated by this right a cause for concern to a partner, close kin, that is, children, family members, during the three moons? Okay. They can be. They sh they will they will not harm, provided that the crossing of the abyss is successful. You need to understand. First of all, forgive my manners. Hi, Kevin. Okay. First of all, <laughs> the crossing of the abyss. If if the abyss is not crossed, then it, it's going to create destruction in in the mind and within the person. I don't think I need to go into detail to, to describe. There's there's enough written in in magical history and in, in spiritual knowledge about failures of the crossing of the abyss. If you fail, you fall. There's going to be problems, and that could—I mean—that could destroy your entire life. You know, there is the possibility. Let's pick um, some uh, some favorite example from the past. It's debatable, and I—I I don't want to incur the wrath of the Thelemites. It is debatable from some people's written perspective, and I'm more almost quoting other people's work here, uh, whether Jack Parsons actually successfully crossed the abyss before he, the, he had the accident with fulminative mercury. Let's just say he was under a lot of duress. So someone who was struggling to cross the abyss or who has failed to cross the abyss, there is the possibility of suicide. There is the possibility of accident uh, or just complete insanity. Um, however, as regards the energies coming off you, they should not do any damage to the family. I will, I will however, give you... Um, uh, a personal experience of my own that is alluded to in Queen of Hell and it's about the entity that was coming through and it was coming through me. When I did the Rite of the Phoenix, when I was at the latter part of the Abyss Crossing or, or possibly even still, or possibly even across it, I don't recall if I'm honest, but I know it was at the later stages of the Phoenix Rite and the later stages of um, assimilating all of that energy my soul was open as a gateway and we had an entity coming through and of course I'm lying next to my partner in, in, in bed and if anyone's ever experienced how a goetic entity in your early days some of them will come through and they will grab you or entities will grab you and they will wrap themselves round you and you can actually feels like being physically gripped and you can feel their energy, you can feel almost their skin it feels like prickly heat on sunburnt skin but then they ignite uh, some of them ignite the sexual energy centers and they they'll ride off that they'll drink a bit of it it's a, a, a mild form of vampirism they're reading you and they're feeding you feeding on you, uh, your energies and exploring you and some of them will ride off the fact that people go <gasps> when they get you're in dream sleep mm -hmm. and you're wandering and they come and they grip your 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 astral self your soul this entity was coming through my own my own body, my own gateway, and it was gripping me, but it was also, it was a tentacle entity, and it was gripping Emilia, who was lying next to me, and she would wake up in shock, and her adrenaline would fly, and of course, this big entity's drinking that fear, it's drinking the, the adrenaline, and, and I, uh, I had to do some, at first I had no idea who or what this entity was, only that it was very old, very powerful, it was a huge entity and it was very primal. I went to Belial to stop this because it actually laid the blame at Belial's door initially and that didn't go down well and it wasn't Belial but Belial I found is an adequate gatekeeper Belial or if you're going to call as is advised in Queen of Hell Cerberus uh, but Belial commands the path of the heights and the depths uh, as he who holds the macrocosmic trident of Hecate he has the ability to open the path. Okay, he's the link between Hecate and Lucifer and man, and he has the ability to open the path between Hecate's throne at what I would call Eden, down to Sephiroth's throne in the Atlantean depths, where this entity was coming from, Edom, the uh, the the original um, universal structure. In short, the entity, for those who have read the Scorpion God, was was an entity called Lomos, and he's a primal Atlantean god. 
and all I knew from contact is this entity's reading me. I, I, I've got enough experience and enough power to be able to read it back. I can't take an entity like that on. Um, and I thought, what the hell does it want? And I thought, the entity knew, Lomos knew, we were going to be working together. I didn't, I hadn't come across Lomos, Lomos. I'd never experienced Lomos. I didn't know what he was, other than that, you know, anything that's large and tentacled and, and any of that very deeply red when you can feel its skin or almost see the manifestation upon you or very deeply black that feasts on fear and sexual energy. If it's, you know, like kind of almost what I would class as a titan, then, then you know that it's primal, that it's ancient. And Lomos was coming through and he was reading me. We were going to be working together. There was going to be a lot. And this entity wanted to know if I was worth my salt or whether I should just be vampirized on my first incursion into the Atlantean depths. And that was the point of grabbing me. The point of grabbing Amelia was the entity was away. Lomos was away. He could get a tremendous... She's, she's very powerful. She's very intuitive. Um, and she, of course she gives off a massive energy pulse when either she's using her intuition uh, on the odd occasion that she would indulge in Malefica when she's had to or if she gets a shock. And it was stimulating her adrenaline. When you, If you get woken up suddenly, you know, uh, whether it's even by someone like for people have had unfortunate enough to have people breaking into the house or something like that, your adrenaline flies. You are between the states. You're a fantastic drinking well for, for, for entities that, that enjoy partaking of that. And eventually he you know, we, we got Belial to back him off because I could actually feel his his presence, like well as his skin burning my skin. Now I've spent a lot of time working uh, with Belial and Sephirans under the watchful eye of Hecate and Lucifer in the Atlantean depths. And I've had a lot of sexual connection with Lomos. I've had a, a, a lot of um, soul connection with Lomos. And when you work with these entities in the Atlantean depths, they leave parts of themselves within you, which is the purpose. It's their venom, it's parts of them, and it all becomes part of a greater whole, which ignites an evolutionary phase in the final judgment of Lucifer's flames. But when you don't know what they are, when you haven't met them at first, and you get strange things happening. You cross the right of the phoenix and you cross the abyss or you're crossing the abyss. A lot of energies, uh, a lot of strange things will happen and you, uh, people get manifestation. Uh, the legion will take on insect form. I, During one element of the crossing of the abyss, I, I had flying ants, an infestation of, of flying ants. Uh, that was the uber heightened energy and the fact that not just through my third eye but actually within uh, the best way I can describe it is looking up from lying on a bed and seeing in actual uh, s space before me a wormhole opening and seeing what people call the city of pyramids which was an indication to me that I was successful in the crossing but it was like looking out of the door of a C-130 Hercules aeroplane in the parachute regiment before you're about to jump down. It was actually like looking down. <gasps> there are all sorts of strange phenomena that can happen when you are, when your consciousness and your soul is elevated far above any level that's previously seen and it can sometimes reverberate off in, into those around you because bearing in mind your soul is powering your flesh and you know your aura is surrounding your, your body here so your aura has a lot of gateways in it you know it's why people who in, indulge in, in too many recreational drugs and push the envelope too far have torn auras and things like that so it, my aura breaks electric things <laughs> things will resonate through your aura but you also have to be mindful that the abyss is one of the ultimate tests. Some people will never cross it, Kevin. Some people will not be allowed through there. And some people will, by their very nature, fail. There are no guarantees. There are no handrails. I found Hecate left me and stepped back because that's the whole purpose of the crossing when I went. And then Lucifer systematically took my life to pieces while showing me just exactly how small I actually was in the Nigredo phase. I mean, I was on my knees. And at one stage, I'll openly admit, in tears, because the, the, the strain on my mind was just, it was like nothing I'd ever experienced in or outside of the military or anything else. But the key to all of that sort of work, if you are concerned about it, is faith. As I've quoted in Queen FL, was said to me, it's the one thing that I 
you know, that I cannot, the one tool that I cannot give you, but it's the one element that, if it's genuinely there, resides inside. The crossing of the abyss, the desert, the dark lake, pick your name for it. Faith lies inside, and it's such an easy word to speak about, but when it's really tested, the only way to test faith is to take everything away to make you think it's all going, or to take it all. Will you still worship Hecate and Lucifer then? My advice to you is yes, or not to embark upon it, because if you're concerned, then plant your faith in Hecate, that your family and those around you will be fine. The abyss is your test, and if, you know, when people go through that, you're going to have enough to worry about uh, through the right of the phoenix if you're successful in initiating the crossing. Let everything else around you run concurrent and, and place, your, your, place your family and even it would be worth writing a prayer beforehand. Before I undertake this ritual, I would ask that whatever happens, you know, please look after my loved ones. There's no harm in that. Absolutely no harm. We're so sometimes we get so engrossed in the in the the, the fiery or, or bloody or, or you know hellfire and brimstone elements of our rituals. A little bit of uh, devotion and love and a simple prayer, it can be very powerful as well. I hope that answers your question. Anyways. Well. Um... I think it did. Uh, uh, you know that uh, Jason actually posted as in the questions, but mm -hmm. he actually posted that uh, Jason, the the early question about that ceremonial mm -hmm. magic. He said yes, it did. Thank you. So we okay, were great. wondering. Great. If <laughs> so I think it did. Now um, there is a couple of other things that uh, you know we should talk about. Uh, we Let's talked about it. Queen of Hell. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and of course, uh, there are more. The, the Red King is one of the most um, beautiful. I like I like blue. It's just because of that. <laughs> but that's, I do like the sigil. I, also. Lucifer's boy. Yes, I like the sigil also. Um, and this is the sigil. The book is exactly in the same material. Is that silk, beautiful cover, is, and then yeah. this is the the, the engraved. Um, uh, gold uh, the seal of the perfect red king of sulfur yeah, as a right. sign of his path being the ultimate path of spiritual alchemy red being synonymous with gold potable gold and the evolution of the soul so here it's, we are it's, one now, of, it's, it's actually one of Lucifer's most ancient symbols or one of certainly one of his older ones before mm -hmm. the, the church started demonizing him one time well, that's funny, actually. One time <laughs> they actually went through that, <laughs> um, like it worked. Uh, so uh, the the thing is that it's very interesting because you told me once that these symbols, all of these things, mm -hmm. you and including the things that are inside the artwork that it's inside, um, you you actually go through it. Uh, and and you receive these, mm -hmm. but you do you tell the artist right? So it's it's yeah. almost like a it's almost like a police portrait, right? So you just go well, it, he's like this, and 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 then I see this, and then he has the eyes like this, and it, so how is that process? I mean, is it uh, uh, Jules? I know that you know you can't write them down and kind of you know you. Well, I'm not. I'm not a great artist. I mean, if you look at some of, uh, if I if I were to go in the other room, I've got a, a, a chest with almost this is 26 huge hardback books of all, all my work in. Uh, the work that's done in possession, you can actually see, is, yes. I won't say half decent, but it's a, a stark contrast and improvement to my normal day-to-day -day drawing. Uh, when I work, I, th I think if you speak to some people that have worked artwork with me in the past, they'll say, Mark Allen Smith, don't speak to me about that man. I never want to hear from him again. <laughs> I, uh, Irene Dominguez Marquez, uh, we're still friends. I don't think she'll do another book with me, but that lady should have a medal. She did three, she did the Trident Trilogy with me, she did three books. What happens is I have the experiences, be it on the inner planes or through possession or in manifestation, and or I get the seals and the sigils, therefore I make notes of this, I, I sketch it as best I can, or uh, in the case of some of the full page artworks, it's not difficult for me to tap into through that gateway the experience that I had then. The difficulty is in conveying it to the actual artist uh, and then the artist getting it right. I was very, I've been very fortunate um, 
with the people that I've worked with in that they have in one way, shape, form or another been practitioners uh, or connected to the occult or very powerful spiritual people. Therefore, in my description, for instance, Irene, uh, by the time we got to the Scorpion God, I could give Irene a set of instructions and she would come back and I think maybe perhaps by one illustration everything was perfect first time because she had such a heavy connection to Lucifer, Hecate, Belial, Sephrans and also Irene would meditate before she'd do the artworks. I think she would meditate before she spoke to me on Skype. That was just <laughs> she didn't strangle me. Um, and she, but she would meditate before she did the artworks. She would then speak to whoever in her meditation, whoever she was, if it was Belial, she would speak to Belial and allow him to guide her. Queen of Hell was the hardest part, but was was uh, for Irene when she did that connecting. But also, I, I know what I want, I know when it's perfect, I know exactly what it should look like but I can't draw it and so I've evolved because with Queen of Hell um, there were some instances w where I looked back and, and I, I thought oh well you know the book I love everything. There's a couple of things with the artworks where I thought now I may have not have done something a, a tad differently, I may have done something differently or I may have changed things because I didn't understand um, the, the vast difference in well, grayscale. I didn't know what grayscale was. I didn't understand how you could merge a, a, a pencil drawing with, with something that's corrected on the computer, and you know it was all a foreign language to me. I didn't understand that aspect of creative art because I'd never done it. I used to go to the um, boating lake when art class was on at school. Mm -hmm. Because I had very little interest in it, I used to bunk off school. I'm not an I'm not an artist, mm -hmm. you know? and I would. But, it, but it's it's very interesting, you know, to see how you know you just go around this. Well, I just you know I I will just have an artist doing. <laughs> I will you know now one a question that I have for you, um, and this to me you know this is this is a current that you tapped into your um, I I continue to say this and I can't say it. Uh, you are uh, a very special uh, human being, and you were chosen. So you basically—that's you know—that's yeah. what it is. Let's just call yeah. it that way. Yeah. Um, and but to bring this current in, so yeah. to the world. Um, but you, you were not void at that point. So you had no. an experience. You had like things behind you. You had like contact with stuff. So my question is how many elements when you begin to channel and bring this current in you recognize that we're already in the world but they are or were misinterpreted or were out of place and can you give us an example of that if <laughs> did, did somebody write that down for you Don't give him the hardest question possible uh, I'll give you the best probably the most blatantly obvious one Loath though I am to to open the pages of of the Christian grimoire, would be say the crucifixion because okay, no one is denying. Yeah, you can see them, but in the crossing of the abyss, okay, no one's denying that the nail people to crosses, but that's not what that crucifixion story is about. It's about actually crossing the abyss, and when you do that, you you feel like your mind is nailed to the four corners of the universe and stretched, etc. That you know, the Christian grimoire is written out of context. The, the Traditionally, or, or if everything is to run smooth, then if you look at 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, again, a biblical reference, mm -hmm. that desert is the abyss, okay? You, mm -hmm. I call it the Dark Lake Crossing because, but one of the gifts that I was given was, a, 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 in manifestation by Lucifer, was a camel. It just presented this image in manifestation, and it was simple, a gift and obviously never look a gift god <laughs> in the mouth but I just thought what am I going to do with the camel but everything the camel needs to cross the desert it holds with inside, inside itself mm -hmm. therefore all I needed was absolute faith and it was very hard, harshly tested but there you go there's one instance of something that's been taken out of context that you suddenly begin to see these things you know um, someone who's 
who was perhaps uh, better read than myself may already have been aware of that. But these things became apparent to me as I walked along on that path. There, there are a lot of things uh, that are, you know, there's synchronicity. But then this brings us back to the craft being actually fragmented. The yeah, gnosis being yeah. fragmented. That's right. There that's are, right. There are but fragments you know, I, just there. Thought, I just thought that you would have some kind of, uh, you know, a, a, um, elements, you know, like little things that you, you would think, oh, so this is what, oh, this goes here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because now you're 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 putting it together. You're bringing this this nos gnosis in. And, in a and way, yes. It's like a, there are jigsaw puzzles. It, it's broadening, and it, it's if you it's like a river broadening, and you know you got pebbles on the shore. The more it broadens, then the more pebbles it connects with. Those being the little elements that you think, oh, so that is actually a part of this. Yeah, yeah. I I guess so. Yes, yes. Um, but. I don't always get that much time to contemplate things like that because no, of course not. Of the, of the level of, of of the level of work, there are little things absolutely. that sometimes come together, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. Little things like that. Yeah. If I'm honest, I, I do actually tend to get swept along. I mean, it's the last few years have been very intense because one of the things about bringing this knowledge forward is the actual. It's not just teaching people. It's not just advising people who write to me and um, who who come to me. It's the Temple of Four Pillars of Fire and the opening of the Four Pillars of Fire. Now we did the temple a few years ago. Hakate approached and said, "You, you will build for me a temple, child." And I thought, "Yeah, okay, absolutely, I will." Being a, a, a very that. staunch, that. <laughs> but and then after after the, the 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 whole possession thing had ended, and I thought. I don't have two brass pennies to rub together. How the bloody hell am I going to? But but I wasn't thinking about it laterally. I was thinking about temples with golden pillars and banners, and that's not what the first temples were about. The first temples were talking a sacrificial temple, although not all work in there is sacrifice. It's I was when I was prompted to go and do it. Belial gave me a, a strong push for a forest altar, and Hecate came through, and it's now time to go and locate a position for this temple. And you need to be able to go forward and work this. And of course, when Hecate comes forward like that, th th there's no there is an element in the way she delivers things. It's like, please don't bore me with your logistical nightmares. Go and do it. <laughs> so I'm going up into the Spanish mountains, and can you see my hands? You know, some of it's like that. Yes. And yeah. I just thought, yeah. where am I going to be able to build anything here? And uh, I was out for, uh, I was only out for, it wasn't a, a huge pilgrimage. I was only out for about half a day. And I just, but I just, I know the area so well, and I thought, how how am I going to do this for her? And I thought I'm going to be out here for a week looking, and then I just got this little lizard went shooting off the path, and I thought, no, it's not going to be that obvious. And there's this little overgrown. Uh, it wasn't a track. It was just you could see people had maybe walked there in the path, in the past. Sorry, and I thought let's let's see what's down there. And I walked down this slope, and the next thing there's this plateau, and it's hidden and it's concealed in these trees, and it actually levels out to that. And as I walked up, I could feel the energy. Also, I could see a shimmering outline, okay, not solid, of Hikate herself. So I started to pick up pace, and I was like a child getting all excited. It was like an, it was like an Easter egg hunt or something like that when you're a kid, you know, <laughs> in the bushes. And I, as I ran forward, there's this circle of sunken stones um, partially collapsed in. But it was the energy. It was the feeling. Um, let's put it this way. She got a hold of me very strongly, and we engaged in sexual magic and communion and possession there and then in the middle of the afternoon in the Spanish mountains. It's concealed, there's no one around, that's the purpose of that, that place there, so, which is just as well. And I thought, this this is it. And then we had the avatars coming in, you know, I had, um, I had, had this, I began work pretty much straight away because a lot of the rocks needed mining out of the ground and I had a, a hand trowel. So I spent maybe three months going up there every day, mining these rocks and putting Rebuilding the, this, uh, rebuilding the eastern wall. On the eastern side, you can walk up to it. Um, on the southern and northern side, it's completely sunken into the ground. Uh, but also, there was a format of outer circles and outer pillars of fire, so that she was going to guide me in opening a vortex within and the the outer four vortices, which would be the microcosmic physical manifestation of what would be the four thrones of the gods, the four pillars of fire. Now, I did try the other year to open one, but, um, and I don't want to get uh, too fine a point of it, things weren't done properly and, and it wasn't opened correctly. However, 
in the scheme of things, it's a minor setback. Let's say omelette and egg syndrome. Okay, you can't make one without breaking the other. So you're going to have a few silver medals and a few minor setbacks. Opportunities are presented to people, um, not by me. I am just the gatekeeper, by the gods. But people find me very difficult. Some people find me very difficult to deal with. Um, I, I've, I've been. One person said to me, uh, egotistical, aggressive, paranoid and borderline megalomaniac. The first three I'll agree with, the last one absolutely no chance, no. But I, I, I the, the, the energy, the work, I tend to, I can be a little bit paranoid, I'm extremely aggressive and anyone who works in this field is going to be, you know, particularly beyond the abyss, is going to be very strong of ego. The, the clashes or the problems that I have with people are, are very much in the form of, uh, a lot of people come, there are, I, I get a lot of power, powerful people, very dedicated people come to do this work, but you also get people that come and they want to bend the work to fit their ethos, bend it for their own kudos, absolutely not. If someone is taking a, a position of, of power or, or, or any kind of energy to go and commit to something, yes, I am just the gatekeeper, but I am also the person who was brought this knowledge forward and brought the Trident Trilogy and as gatekeeper to the Temple of Four Pillars of Fire, I insist that if you're going to teach, you teach properly or not at all. Mm -hmm. Everyone has different methods of working this, this knowledge behind closed doors or out in the open forests or on the beaches or the fields or, or wherever they work, but to teach it, then you, you can't square peg round hole. It's, it's got to be it's taught properly, and I'm very defensive of, of, of the actual current in that way. What are you saying? You're saying that there are people who actually are saying that, oh, I'm a teacher of the... Of no, I'm, I've had people come and... And saying instance, that they want to be, you know, or they heard that someone... Right. Them, you know how we it get, is. You know, yeah, this I, all gets there. Uh, somehow there will be people saying that they were initiated by you in the in the mountains of Spain where they weren't, actually. <laughs> you never heard oh, of I'll, them. I'll soon, I'll soon correct them on that. I mean, I like to keep an element of, of decorum, but... I am actually very aggressive, and I have absolutely no qualms about, if necessary, uh, uh, you know, sorting something out in public. I'd rather not, but if I have to, I will. I'm a former parachute regiment soldier. My loyalty is to Hakate, so yeah. I get people and to this current and to this work because this is people's souls we're dealing with. It requires somebody strong. It requires somebody. That in some cases, you have to be stern. That things. If you is, undertake is there, a position, is there just, any teachers? Yes, is there, there are. any teachers? Yeah. yeah, there are. There are people teaching, but if you undertake a position and you do something, and you are required, and it's not always the case, to open something with sacrifice, just saying you've done so isn't enough. Particularly if you've made yeah. a pact with Lucifer or Hecate, yeah. then you have to do it. And I get a lot of feedback from the spirits and the gods themselves as to whether things are done properly. However, I have also had people come who are nothing short of devoted and stellar in what they do. The lady who was doing, and it's a long-term project, the lady who was doing the garden of the fountain of the gods, if she says she will do something, she will do it. And she has uh, undertaken some works that were initially maybe uncomfortable for her, but She's done them in acts of devotion with Hecate, and I, I get people that you can just see are, are brilliant. I get people inquiring, and I read them. Uh, I will read someone through their emails um, at, at quite a deep level. I, I need to be able to do that. Uh, it doesn't mean that things can't go wrong, because people are given opportunities, and there is the element of free will. Absolutely, yeah. I could trip over my own shoelaces by being way too egotistical, and it could happen to me. So there is all the pos always the possibility of a silver medal with these things, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I, I tend to read people, and some people I look at, and I think, you know, very occasionally I look at someone, I think, you, you would be perfect for this. But I can't say that. You have to come forward and it has to be right. On the other side of that, Carrigan, I also get people who are looking at what I'm doing and they're looking at one of the four pillars of fire or one of the other um, positions of power ignited by the gods, 
because I am just the guy that opens the vortices in the temple for these initiations and they think it's going to be a, a fast track. They're looking for a title, they're looking for some kudos in the occult world. I, I can well, smell them a mile away and... I, can, I, can, like I feel you. I, feel I don't. You. I don't like it when people do that. And, but and it's not, nature. If... Let me just say that primal craft and the the path is is not the only one. There's many paths. Where yeah, that I've, 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 I've seen it. Unfortunately, you know. Yeah. And I they they normally come with an awful lot of sales pitch. Oh, absolutely. In their emails, I, I get absolutely. that. But I also get some very very devoted people. And you know, there's there's one chap. Um, who I hope I haven't spoken to him for a while. I hope he comes. You know, he doesn't want anything other than to come over. He's teaching a group, and they work together. It's almost like they they teach each other. They work as as equals as a group, and it's just a mm -hmm. small. Uh, and he's there are no um, there's there's nothing uh, grandiose about it. He just calls it his circle and that. But he, he they're working through the books, and they, there was some questions and discussions about the toad right that were coming to me, and he wanted me basically to correct a few points, etc. And he said, you know, I really hope because it's a long way to come to Spain, but also that's part of it, it's part of the pilgrimage. He said, I really hope to be able to come there to undertake the initiation, just to be able to take this back to my group, and that's all this guy wants. He wants to do that, go back to his group, uh, and they, they'll go back you know, into the shadows and, and, and carry on working there. He's not looking for any kind of recognition. The people that undertake the Pillars of Fire, which will be opened through the, the Temple of Four Pillars of Fire here, then they are ob obviously going to be more in the public eye, and they're going to have to be prepared for that. And they will, they will operate independently. Uh, I must stress that the initiations here um, they are at the level of the soul, so people need to think very carefully before they do that, because it, it's not something you can then uh, circumvent, reconnect, or, or gazump with a, uh, a, another path at a later date when the initiations are structured at soul level to be eternal to Hecate, Lucifer, Belial, Sephirans, it's Hecate's temple. Each person will get something different, but I've seen of the few that I've done the uh, tremendous rise in one person's intuition skyrocketed. Another person came who had not been able to have any kind of manifestation and had been working for 10 years. Uh, so, you know, you've got a level of devotion to the work there. Uh, unable to do that, came to the temple and, you know, we had the discussion and I, the, the guy was like, you know, I've been doing this a long time but I'm actually, in the scheme of things, quite quite basic. And he was actually frightened and he said, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned because I know this is a, the, this is my soul and, uh, and I said, it has to be your choice. I said, I can tell Absolutely. you you'll be fine because yeah. I know you will be fine. I said, the only thing is, because of your limited ability or n almost nil ability to work on the astral, you're not going to get much in the way of manifestation. You're not even going to get etheric manifestation. The long story short, we went through it. We went when we went up. It was actually cold. I ended up taking my coat off, and in the middle of the initiation, giving this guy my coat, and that because I'm moving around and he's focused on the northern altar and locked into this initiation um, past the the fetish lord uh, that stands at the centre, and. Basically, he came back, uh, I don't know, it was three or four months later. It took a while for the currents to assimilate within mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. But he said, you know, I, uh, I need to tell you that I, he said, I understand and I believe and I feel it was Belial, he went, but it was hooded and it was solid. And he said, you, you need to understand, Mark, this is not etheric. This was solid, standing, looking in through my French doors at me. And he went, no, if you've never been to my house, Mark, he said, but my walls, you that you can't get in, let alone get in in, in a huge black robe, um, and you know, wearing, wearing stick-on party horns. Uh, <laughs> he, he said he, he, the way he described that wasn't what he said, but the way he described it was, you know, it's a very private place. The walls of my house are very high. This is a very secure place, and this was solid. And so he got what he was looking for, um, which is people will not always get what they're looking for, what they want, but that was going to be the 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 primary aid for this guy in his work. That was the first step for him, yes, yes. was that he was elevated to the point that he could then be given manifestation without it doing him any damage. Because I think the experience people listen knowing is that if they want you to see them, you'll see them. 
but they want you to work for that and bring you forward as well. And then, of course, there are, there are many different types of manifestation, um, which range from something on the astral to something on the mundane in the ether to something in smoke to something solid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then after that, there is uh, an intense work by way of making a point or by way of hugely powerful gifts, the manifestation of flesh and blood animals within a sealed temple, an mm -hmm. indoor temple and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So while this guy isn't at that stage yet, it's an example of something that someone got there to go and then do their own work. So it's what people do when they take the initiation here is basically they are required to um, mark their name within the book of Hecate. The book only gets opened with an offering of blood and only uh, blood is in the book. I know because I numbered all of, there are 333 leaves, so 666 pages in this book, and they're all numbered in my own blood. And there are uh, some glyphs that I'll, I'll leave for now, because they're for a later book, um, but there are a set of glyphs on the book, and they're all done in my blood. And the first name in the book is my own. The seal of this book weighs about 18 pounds. You can't pick it up. You can hold it under your arm with one hand. Once you've picked it up, you can't pick it up with one hand unless you're built like Dolph Lundgren. Uh, <laughs> it's a very large, heavy book, and it was made by a master craftsman. Price is, is not an issue. Money, obviously, is not an issue. But to give you an idea, this single book cost uh, about 50 quid short of 1,000 euros to have made and fashioned for her cat and for her temple. Mm -hmm. And it's a one-of-a-kind um, and the seal at its heart was made by a gentleman in the United States of America when I was given the seal and given the instruction for the book writing your name in the book is akin to writing your name and marking it on the body of a cat and therein lies a lot of the power for a lot of people that's the direct connection a couple of people that have been initiated need to come back um, because the, the work was done for them before the book was constructed yes. um, I've had the book for, I don't know, I'm pushing two years now, just under two years, but some people uh, did work with me just before that, and they need to come and put their, their names in the book, which will, again, elevate their power. Um, and it's not, you know, a very heavy commitment, a very permanent commitment to Hecate. Mm -hmm. It's, the book does not belong to me, uh, it will be passed down. Uh, at this moment in time, I suppose the next uh, person well, working in a linear fashion of thinking it would be my daughter mm -hmm. if she takes up the trident mantle. If not, then it would be someone else who's doing this. But the, it will be a long time and I will be long dead before that book is filled with names because it's absolutely huge and mm -hmm. it will be passed down to whoever is the custodian and gatekeeper of the temple because mm -hmm. I know that the temple will be there long after I'm gone. No, oh, absolutely. But the well, seal let me, in the front... Let me just... Let me just um, the seal on the front. Hold on. Yeah. We have 15 minutes, people. If you do have any questions for Mark, we have 15 minutes. So um, last questions right now. If you want to write them down, uh, we will have a little bit of time to answer them. Uh, but, you know, it's just to tell you uh, that we have just 15 minutes. Uh, uh, Mark, go ahead. I'm sorry. The seal okay. on the front. And the front. Well, the, the seal on the book is a copper seal, and I think I've covered this before, but basically when I was given it, it was very specific, and it's very detailed, and it had to be in, you know, uh, one of three types of metal. Gold was one of them, and, and that just wasn't... Uh, I'm, I'm all... I'm, I'm a believer in sacrifice, and this, but this, you have to understand... This seal is, is an inch thick, and it's five inches in diameter. That would be a lot of gold, even if it was only nine carat. <laughs> gold and copper were the only uh, real options. Gold, because of its transmutational ability and its manifestational capabilities, because of its vibrations. Copper, because of its uh, tremendous reaction with human blood. Mm -hmm. And so a day after, or I don't know if it was a day or two days, because a few years ago I got this, I just thought, how am I going to have this done? I'm hardly an artist. And, and this gentleman, uh, Edward is his name, I won't go into full details, he's a spiritual gentleman, emailed me out of the blue, introduced himself, asked some spiritual advice on the primal craft path, and said, by the way, I use high-pressure water technology, I, I do this, I do that, I use laser technology, I can cut metal, I can I can make anything. And I thought, <laughs> okay. So I wrote back and I went, okay, yeah. Well, let's see if you can sort of thing. But I said, I said, okay, well, what about this? And he went, I can do that for you. 
and so it, it took him a long time. And he was coming back to me with specifications and things that just went over my head. He was talking a language I didn't understand with vectors and, and things. Um, and so I actually wrote back and I went, I don't really mean to be rude, I went, but can you just make it? Because I, I don't know what you're saying. And it was, it's only my own ignorance because I'm, I'm not skilled in that area. Yeah. So this gentleman made this. He, I paid nothing for it. He would take no money for it. He said it was made as, a, as an offering and in devotion. And then he disappeared. Um, so when the Scorpion God uh, was printed, I, I sent him one of the... Uh, the gold, 24 karat gold stamped leather venom editions. Yes. There are only 73, one of Belial's books, to, to say thank you because it the seal, like the book, it's one of a kind. And mm. I think that was the whole point. But the synchronicity was just, it was nice. Let's put it now, that way. Mark, I want you to talk about, I don't want to go away without you talking okay. about the next project because it's the tied in on these three. Um, you're beginning a new project. Uh, it's a begin. It's a, the beginning of a is, yes. series of books. Um, the first one, it's called the um, uh, the sacrifice of the altar of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice. It's, it's very beautiful. You have already in your um, Primal Craft uh, website. It's www.primalcrafteverythingtogether.com. Um, an index, actually, of the, of the book, and it's uh, right. So you have like the parts yes. of the book that are meant to be um, the, the contents list is there. Yeah. So let me just say this uh, to the to the uh, listeners, uh, those of you who don't really have these books, but um, they got they got thicker and thicker and thicker <laughs> <laughs> as yeah. you go further in the process. So the first one, Queen of Hell, is kind of a, I can actually. Um, do you want me to hold them up? You. I've got three of them yes, here. Yes. Um, there you go. Um, so you can see that Queen of Hell, and th this is Queen of Hell, of course. Uh, it's a little bit thinner, and then of course the Red King is a little bit thicker, and then the, the Scorpion God is just huge. Um, and you can see the differences in here. So I am thinking that uh, by the judging by the the you know the the, the ultra sacrifice of the same size as the Scorpion God. <laughs> you're starting. You're starting uh, pretty big now. Uh, uh, of course, um, this is. Um, oh, uh, there is a uh, Chris. Chris Groves have a, a question here. I, w I will go to that, Chris. Um, th there is a whole, uh, you know, a whole uh, uh, speculation about where do you start? Where, th how much, <laughs> you know, Mark will start, and then how much will go from there? Because this okay. is. This is a huge current. I mean, I, I can tell you that the altar of sacrifice will be the same size as the Scorpion God. The second yes. book, okay, which is uh, it functions very much like the Red King did with the Trident trilogy. Yes. Yes. It's the altar of sacrifice is, will be probably the second largest because the third book will be the largest. The second book will be slightly smaller than the altar of sacrifice. I know because it's already written. I've written it. I just haven't worked on it to refine it. Um, it will be the, the the hub around which the other two uh, are are fixed. Um, this is the, the the current of sacrifice. Now, I need to give a little bit of explanation about this. Okay, uh, I will start by saying that the you know the way of the the bloodless path is is just as noble and respectable as the way of the bloody path. However. Hakate has chosen me to bring forth the path of sacrifice. I will also stipulate and stress this is not a natural act to me. It has no bearing with 13 years of training to kill in the parachute regiment because that's a different entity altogether. I actually found the path of sacrifice very difficult and I refused it. And I refused it three times before I was overridden and Hakate actually at the level of the soul, place the energy in my soul. It manifests as a blade. It's akin to being stabbed. Once it's in, it disseminates within. Once that happens at this level, there, there is no going back. I mean, okay, I can resist up to a point, but it's then it then becomes a matter of placing myself in opposition with the Queen of Hell. There are people that are going to question why I'm bringing back the rites of sacrifice. I have a couple of things that I would like to say about that now so people can hear this and they can understand I won't make any excuses. I will simply say this. If I was speaking about Haitian voodoo or various other things or certain elements of Islam or the Hindu, no one would say anything. 
It's because I'm returning sacrifice openly within the witchcraft. There may be a few objections. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a vegan. I'm, I'm a meat eater, anyways. Uh, but there, you know, I had one guy question me, and I, I simply returned with a few questions, and he went, "I suppose it's easy for me to sit here judging you after I ate my burger this morning." And I said, "Yes, okay." The way of sacrifice is returning something that was there a long time ago that is intrinsic to this path. It doesn't mean that you have to practice the art of sacrifice. In actual fact, many people will have to petition Hecate for the act of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice as a book initiates you, it opens you, and it introduces you to the way of sacrifice. And the first rites are actually opening the way of sacrifice, and she may well refuse you, or she may not. However, there are, there is also, there is a but to that, in that she may approach you, whether you work in the primal craft or not, if you're working near and Hecate may not be the only god or goddess that will approach someone and insist that they do this. For those that would judge too harshly, you're entitled to your opinions. I would simply say this. If you were a devotee of whoever, and for me it's Hecate, and this goes and this went against the grain, because I'm, it is not a natural act to me, how far does your devotion go? Because it is on an act of devotion and pure love for Hecate that I eventually conceded to follow this through. If I may, I have a small passage, if I can find it, that I would perhaps like to read out. Absolutely. Um, now, we're, so um, you know, Danielle uh, had a question, which is yes. exactly what you're answering right now. So we're, ask, we're answering uh, the question that he uh, asked, which is, could Mark tell us something more about the new book? Here we go. Let me read to you Hecate's charge unto me. And let's see if I need the light on for this. Okay. No, I'm okay. Okay, go ahead. This is taken in direct channeling and in direct communication with Hecate and, and transcribed as best as word for word as I can. Okay. It comes through the gates of the soul and it came through in manifestation and possession. And it came through when it was delivered. In short, she delivered the element that allowed me to open the way of sacrifice and told me that I was doing it. There wasn't anything that came forward from me because I wasn't able to speak back to her at that stage because I was prevented from doing so. When the goddess takes control of you, as many of you will recognize, at that level of power, if she wants you to stand and listen, you stand and listen. It was a complete takeover. I have heard your protests and prayers. I have felt your pain. You want the knowledge and the power of the all, but do not wish to spill blood that is not yours. Of the many who would willingly take this gnosis, you are not one. Instead, you attempt to deny this gift, resisting my will. That you would reject the way of sacrifice is the very reason you have been chosen as he upon whose shoulders this burden is placed. If you cannot walk this path for yourself, walk it for me. And in love and honor, return the gnosis of the old ways to man. This sacrifice is one I ask you to make for me. Life is the sacrifice you will give. The pain this causes your heart is the sacrifice made by a devoted soul to his goddess. For he who feels no pain and no sadness in this act makes no sacrifice at all. He simply takes life for the gratification of power and shall know nothing other than spiritual servitude. Walk this path with as much honour and dignity for they who are offered unto me in blood on the Sabbath nights as you can, and the gates of primal power shall open before and within your soul. In the dark limitless power of the black cauldron womb you will bathe in Lucifer's flames. As this soul path is forged and the venom of the curse is spat forth, the gateways to past, present and future will be revealed within the path of the heights and the depths, opened by Belial's trident. Here, in rivulets of blood, which flow between the dust and earth of the devil's flesh and the eternal black void, together we shall return the power and knowledge known only in legend and manifest in unity the needs and desires of the queen of witch gods and the thrice crowned god's soul incarnate as the flesh of mortal man.
Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, this was uh, Mark Allen Smith in um, sitting on the black chair. <laughs> and your chair is actually black. Isn't my, my, chair, my chair is black. It is it indeed. Is I have a little smile I mean, to myself show, the other show day. Show it again. Show it again. It is black. Look. Yes. <laughs> you know that it's very interesting because every time I have uh, someone, um, you know, on the black chair, they actually are sitting in a black chair. <laughs> a little bit of little bit of synchronicity for so, you there. Well, I just want to ask you: mm -hmm. When can we have this? Uh, expecting this book out. The first. Okay. First of all. Uh, a humble apology to all of you who have um, paid for your book and are waiting for your book. This is the first of, of three books uh, and it, it will cover the elements and power of, of the Temple of Four Pillars of Fire. In short, I'm not hoarding the knowledge. The temple here is the mother temple. It's the, so it's the, the source gate through which this flows, but I'm giving the knowledge through which people can open their own temple of four pillars of fire and connect it through this one to Hecate. They can open their own vortices through the gates of death. That's a lot of what's in the book as well as the um, various other rituals etc. From that then people then have a foundation to, to continue this work. Uh, the culmination of the work of opening the temple and, and giving all of this knowledge forward and the spilling of the blood and the evolution of the rituals performed within it awakens the body of the dragon, both the macrocosmic beast within the earth, it is fed as the ancestors are fed and the pathways opened and all of the knowledge and the gateways for this are within the altar of sacrifice and the book that follows. It also uh, remembers, reforms and recreates um, the body of the individual temple dragon, okay? The blood, the sacrifice of life, the sexual fluids and everything goes forward to feed uh, the ground, feed the flesh of Belial and, and it will open gateways through which these entities are, are reformed and, and returned. Mm -hmm. The book itself, uh, we've, I've changed the way um, we do things at Primal Craft. All standard editions now are going to be hand-bound books. So the altar of sacrifice uh, it is going to be a handbound book. The, the the spines, the the just the whole method, and the construction of the book. These books are. I want them to be built. I want them to be put forward and created with even more love, with even more care, so that really they are uh, worthy of the knowledge that's inside them and worthy of the gods. Uh, mm -hmm. You know who they represent as, as gateways. Mm -hmm. The altar of sacrifice will be ready in December. It's delayed. Uh, I wanted it to be released in Samhain. However, the specialist binder that I work with uh, and the different people at that bindery, these guys are and, and girls, are they're all artists. So the other week, the, the gentleman had the, uh, they have a, a, a brass uh, created through which they stamp the cover with the gold or, or with the rose copper or whatever they're doing and where I've worked in places in the past and had to send books back because people were not checking because it was more mass market at the hand binders this, the, the guy who deals with the covers he's taken a look at the brass and he's gone that's absolutely not good enough and he sent it back before the first cover so they're all very much artists because it's a hand bindery um, so it, it's not wise for me to rush them. I do, I've put as much pressure as I can on them. The books are in production now, and we are we're at the end of print, beginning of, of bind stage. And what what I've asked for is that the all 999 will be bound, but I've asked for the first several hundred to be shipped out in in two containers. Uh, it, it's uh, it'll cost. I think it's going to cost. I don't think the binder's going to charge me. It'll cost them a little bit more. Um, but it's a matter of three or four hundred euros so that the people that have waited patiently can have the book at least before the end of, of, of this year. So in short, December is when the altar of sacrifice will be ready. And we will we will actually be here again when the yes. book... Uh, so as soon as we have the book out, we will come here again and have Mark again on the black chair to talk about the book and in depth. We'll be able to give everyone a little bit more, uh, a lot more detail about the book itself then. Yes. Uh, and, and, the, and the path and, and you know, the work yes. from the temple and, and where it's going. You yes. know, so I think some people, some people are just recapping and some people may be, may be catching up because they haven't perhaps encountered m myself or my work before. So 
Now, let me just say this to you uh, um, very quickly because we just over, but it's fine. Um, we, uh, if is it possible for someone to pick up right now? Mm -hmm. Meaning, is it possible for people who actually are not or do not have the three books first, the the, the trident uh, books, if if they can to pick up the start. altar sacrifice. Yes, if they can start it on the altar of sacrifice, or they do they need that training before? It depends on the person. It depends on the person. What I have learned through experience with these books is that if someone is going to follow the path of flame, for instance, case in point, the Trident Trilogy, if what they're looking for is the final initiation of the soul and fire to then move through the next stage and be yeah. allowed... The Scorpion God... You're only allowed so far on the Atlantean depths, okay, to take yeah. so much knowledge before you are required to undertake the final initiation in fire. And then the level below that, it's I'm still working through it now, and it's just vast and it just keeps opening and opening and opening and more of a spider web and opening and opening. And so for someone to want to do that, then you're going to need the first three of the Trident trilogy. However, there are people that are taking tangential paths to coin a grant phrase out of the Red King. There are some people that have taken the work of the Demon Princes, and I mean, they're working solely with the Demon Princes from the Red King, and, and it's almost like they're not stopped from going any further. They've found a, a channel and a path, and they're, they're getting, the Demon Princes have grabbed them, and they're getting knowledge, and they're so happy working with them that they are moving forward in, in, in another way, but slowly, because they found this other pathway. So there are a lot of paths, and there are paths that I haven't walked coming out of these books. As regarding the altar of sacrifice, it depends on the person, because there are going to be people that work in like what I would call a genuine shamanistic aspect, that work out perhaps... Mm -hmm. There are going to be people that are going to come from some, maybe some of the African side or even some of the Haitian side that are going to be curious about this. They're going to be able to connect and w walk into the, the, the sacrificial path. Um, but it isn't just a book about sacrifice. There is a lot of stellar wisdom in here, and there is yeah. the full, between the altar of sacrifice and the book that follows, there is the full, complete compendium of being able to open a temple of four pillars of fire Okay, to the stellar elements and to the Atlantean depths below. What I've done at the beginning of the altar of sacrifice, I've had as front as pieces the four uh, gates of fire that yeah. people can see throughout the Trident trilogy, and I've put those in and printed them so that when they are referenced, people have them at the front of the book. Okay, all of the sigils and the seals that people need should be in the altar of sacrifice. A beginner will not be able to to uh, there are some beginners, if it's an intuitive person and they are connected and they're guided well with the gods, okay, and they make the right petitions, it is possible that they can they can work that book, okay? Mm -hmm. It is possible that they can come through. Okay. Um, I would always advise people to pick up the Scorpion God simply because of its, its size. The Scorpion God, I will not make a PDF extract, okay? There's too much knowledge, and I would have to extract the whole book. It's pointless. There are enough copies here for people that wish to to come forward and, and perhaps you know grab one at the last minute when the altar of sacrifice comes out. I would advise people to grab the Scorpion God. Yeah. The other two books, the previous books, then we can either you know, we can find the knowledge, get it to people one way or the other. I can I will make the extract of the Red King. Now I I have a last question, and it's a question from somebody mm -hmm. that actually was uh, uh, on the chat room. Uh, it's still uh, we have a, well we can have just you answering this very quickly, cool. um, but. I think that also this question is very much into, it's from Chris Groves, and I think it's very much into the next show, but we leave it Let, here let's have the question. because it, it yeah. will be a bridge to the next show, which is Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Um, so he said, I want to understand the ecology of animal sacrifice, individual death versus mass death. Is extinction a sacrifice, or is it a bad thing, as it Cal's the end of sacrifice. Extinction, it depends if we're talking about extinction of a species, okay, then usually that's going to come around at the hands of man. That is a bad thing. That's not a good thing. Individual sacrifice, it's for even even the food that uh, that a lot of us eat day to day. It's killed in slaughterhouses for those of us that eat meat. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. 
there's no ritual, there's no passing, there's no petitioning for the evolution of the soul. Okay, it's no good saying to an animal that's about to be sacrificed, this is for your own good, your soul's about to be evolved. It's not going to thank you for it. If it, if it feels, if it, if it glints the blade or it feels the end coming, it's not about that. But the path of sacrifice is a path to evolution in that way. That's not necessarily why we're doing it. It's a byproduct. But the ritual honor must be given as much dignity, and it's easier said than done in practicality, as much honor and dignity as is possible must be shown. It should never be a species that would be on the borderline of extinction. But man kills wantonly. Man kills man in the name of oil and greed. And where is the honor? Where is the real honor? Where is the sacrifice? Where is the ritual rite of passage? One of the reasons we have gang cultures is because our genuine ritual initiation and tribal culture has all been all but been stamped out, but it's still in our DNA. It's in our cellular level. Therefore, there is initiation by violence. So much of what people consider primal and barbaric, primal I would agree with, in the path of sacrifice that has been removed is causing so many problems elsewhere. While the same people that would complain about this turn a blind eye to the, the, the skinning of sharks for their fins and throwing alive back into the water. What for? Shark fin soup? There is no honor, there is no dignity, there is no ritual rite of passage. That is the path to extinction. One of the reasons that the path of sacrifice is being returned is because what it brings with it is a volume and a level of knowledge and power that arms the common man. For those with the courage and determination to test it, there are there is knowledge. The altar of sacrifice as a book contains the apocalyptic keys, keys with which cataclysmic events can be initiated. For those with the will to go and open them, understand that if you open them as a megalomaniac, then it's your soul that's going to burn. If you open them in a particular landmass because you believe that the level of corruption cannot be stopped and the world's soul will not be balanced, and it will not be balanced by the hand of man in what is essentially 344 years from now, then there will be another fall. So the gods are bringing back this knowledge and they're bringing back this power and one of the methods, one of the routes is to educate man to open the gateway. Blood, sacrifice, it opens the path, it feeds the ancestors. Some cultures will understand this and some cultures to, to not sacrifice is to starve your ancestors, quote unquote Andrew Chumbly. Okay, um, but blood itself opens gateways the sacrificial art opens vortices of death, but as regards something uh, on a, an ecological level where it we're borderlining extinction, it ha I hope this answers your question, it has no bearing, it has no relevance to the art and the practice of sacrifice because it's more of a done on an ecological level or a, a species may become extinct because of some sort of pollutant. Again, we're back to money, we're back to greed, we're back to why we are at the dawn of the apocalyptic aeon, why the gods are bringing forth primal power, the art of sacrifice, and the apocalyptic keys. And I, I would like to say this before I go. I hear an awful lot from various corners within and without the occult about, and I agree with them, about how we should have a revolution, how we should do this, how we should do that. Uh, with the exception of um, Mr. Cecatelli and myself, there aren't too many people that have extreme military experience. And those of us that do know that the common man stands no chance against the governments and the paramilitary police forces of the world. And also, moreover, that the people shouting for revolution are not actually going to get up there and ignite it as practitioners of the craft. The only other alternative that we have, other than to keep blowing hot air, is to bring forth the knowledge and the power and the rituals that will initiate these things. That's the power of witchcraft. It's not in using uh, witchcraft as a political forum. It's in bringing forth, if you are chosen to bring forth, if you are given this knowledge, things like the apocalyptic keys, things like the reformation of the great beast's body, things like the rise of Sephirans as daughter of war, conquest and fire, that will turn in the relevant sectors, man against man, that will initiate more volcanic eruptions, tectonic shifts and tsunamis and yes there will be a lot of death and a lot of destruction. That's the power of witchcraft to work alongside the gods as opposed to merely using magic and witchcraft as a political forum and a soapbox from which to stand on and shout and it's a bloody path and not many people have seen a great deal in the way of smashed humanity outside of the military unless they're living in a country in which it exists so those that would perform these rituals 
need to understand that that's what lies at the end of that path. But the gods want man to work in connection with him. Hecate wants man to understand that the common man has a say, that to open these rites, and you know, there's always going to be someone that says, oh, these rituals, can you really do that? I've always said, from the first initiation in Queen of Hell, till I drop down dead, probably with a pen in my hand, the answer to that is in performing the rites. And if you're performing them for the right reason and with full and committed heart, then you will get exactly the result that you want. Just make sure that is the result that you want. I don't censor and I don't edit when she brings forwards uh, rites of destruction and the knowledge of the apocalyptic keys and the seals, then I'm bringing them forward and I'm publishing, publishing them. It's why Primal Craft has now become its own entity. It's what Hecate wanted from the start. Mm -hmm. It is the foundation for her Primal Witchcraft through which knowledge and power that the Atlanteans, that the Egyptians had, including the ability to open stellar gateways and to open cataclysmic gateways is being returned. And it's all part um, of being at the dawn of the apocalyptic aeon. It's part of the return of the art of sacrifice, which is but a small bloody key turning in a very large apocalyptic gate. Um, now I do let hope that just, answers the chap's uh, question. Yes, no, no. Let me just, uh, let me just uh, do this. Uh, it's very interesting. I'm going to just select this one. It's just an answer. It's not really um, a question from Chris, the same. It, he's just saying to you, Mark, I am really impressed with your ongoing answer. For context, I am a Vedic Hindu and a vegetarian personal choice. The Vedas do, does, however, contain animal sacrifice rites, even human sacrifice rites. Yes. These are similar to how you explain respect, and that's it. So, thank you. Thank you very, very much. That's, that's so, a fantastic reply to my reply. That's a great so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. This was Alan, uh, Mark Allen Smith and, and talking about the first three books of um, th this fantastic uh, books. There are now, uh, where hopefully we, we think uh, they should be, um, and uh, of course, you know, sometimes uh, they're live, they're really alive, and, and you know, they're very specific books, you know, I think that, you know, go it's ahead. It's growing, isn't it, Carrigan? I mean, yes. I, if I could just mention quickly, uh, I'll quickly slip this one under the radar. Um, it's, grown to the, it's grown in areas that have surprised me, because although it, it's not what we were seeking, um, Primal Crafts actually received uh, what I would class as academic recognition. Uh, I was approached. Oh, yes, to yes, we need to talk about that. Where yes. are going? <laughs> I was I was approached just under two years ago by uh, uh, Professor Connell Manette. Uh, he's a Canadian gentleman, and he's uh, took his PhD at the University of Toronto, uh, but he lives and works in Morocco. Um, so he's about 100 miles behind me in that direction. Yeah, and he works right. in the Al Akawan University. Right, the tip of Portugal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's the, he's the vice, vice president of the Al Akawan uh, University and, and a lecturer and a, a, a professor and teacher there. And he has written a book called Mysticism in the 21st Century. And it's a, contemp it's a, it's a study um, of five paths of contemporary uh, spiritual mysticism basically. Mm -hmm. uh, yoga, uh, Sufism, Hermeticism, um, Tantric and, and Pagan. And Dr. Manette has chosen uh, Primal Craft as what he perceived to be uh, the authentic path of Akate within you know this aeon. And so it, it's it's been a lot of interviews and, and, and um, a, a lot of uh, conversation because obviously Dr. Manette needed to get a feel for Primal Craft, you need to get a feel for the, the, the current, etc. But I have to say I, I'm i not unhappy. I'm, I am um, honoured that Primal Craft has, has been chosen to partake in that because mysticism in the 21st century, it's actually on sale now in, on Amazon, uh, but, but it's, for me, the big thing is that because the gentleman is a professor at university, this book can now be put forward to the universities of the world yes. for the students who who want have an interest and, and wish to you know follow pursue an interest in mysticism, and those that wish to pursue an interest in the occult, they're going to have this textbook available to them 
should the universities wish to take it on. The book is um, the book is called Mysticism in the Twenty First Century, um, yes. Doctor um, Monette, and it's it it really is in, incredible. Uh, uh, and and you know um, you can you can do this. You can go into uh, Primal Craft website and you can get this um, from you know the cover of the book and everything and all of yep. the things. But so the, the cover of the book and, and the actual there's a brief history uh, in, in just in blog format of of uh, Primal Craft's involvement within the book on there, and then there are links to Sirius Academic, who are the publishers. Um, it, it, people can buy it because I know some people don't like to buy from Amazon. People if they want to purchase the book, uh, then they can find it through Sirius Academic. I think this week yes. directly. But yeah. for myself, you know, I'm not I'm not university educated. I left school at uh, uh, just before I just after 16 and um, a few brushes with the law and went to join the military <laughs> so uh, when I began putting Hecate's work forward and it's it's not kudos for me because it's not about the the writing or the style of writing it's about the fact that he has picked up upon the primal craft current and the path of Hecate That's very interesting. Uh, and but I, I didn't I didn't see that coming and you know initially I have to say and Connell, forgive me if you watch this interview. I I was a bit reluctant at first because it's academic community, and I was like, "What does the academic community want with Primal Craft?" From you know? me, and, <laughs> yeah. From and then craft. I just the, yes. the the force from Hakate was well, you, know, you are you know, doing this. The thing is, it doesn't really surprise me. You know why? Because you know Hakate is also or Hakate is also um, the one who gives the knowledge. So it really is. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, you know, it, it it is another current, but it, it's pulling that little string to a different side. It, but well, it is. It yeah, is. it's bringing no. awareness. It, it's bringing awareness. You know, yeah. I mean, it it was at first. It was a bit of uh, a bit of reluctance on my part, and then, you know, it's I have to remember really that. Fantastic! It's really because good. I'm because I'm very stern and very strong-willed, and that at the end of the day, I am, but Hecate's gatekeeper to this temple and this current, and. Yeah. In all fairness and, and in all honesty, you know, it is. I am very humble before Hecate. I know people. Some people have had difficulty with me in the past. I have to be strong to make sure that this knowledge is brought out properly. But it's a it's a different um, it's a different perspective uh, when I work with Hecate because you know I kneel before Hecate. She's the queen of hell. I am, you know, but a, a mortal gatekeeper, and so my position. At her feet and before her is is very humble, but at the same time, I was honoured to have participated with Connell Manette in this in this book. And I mean, I've actually I've actually purchased the book myself. I'm waiting for it to arrive because I I know what is written about Primal Craft, and I think for anyone practicing it, 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 it may not give them a, a, a greater insight than what they already have. But I would like to see. Uh, I've had it read out to me and I've had it explained, but I like to sit and digest things myself, so I yeah. want to read just, just like his, some, his view. Some, yeah, just like an outsider. Yeah, but I also want to read, you know, there's Robert Svoboda's forewords, and I'm, I'm curious to read, uh, you know, about the other paths of the Sufism, etc. I want absolutely. to see, you know, the, the other contemporary paths. Yeah, 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 Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mark. It was just thank you. another wonderful... Uh, uh, so as always, uh, we'll we'll be back. I I will invite everyone, including um, Chris, to to come again. I you know he has another question, but I think that that question should be done when we begin to enter this. Go on, do it now for him. Um, so Go on. select. Do it now for him, Carrigan. So <laughs> through the re 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 reverential animal sacrifice, we can instill in our blood and the blood of our descendants and humanity at large, the correct honor and respect with, with regards to the natural world? Yes, indeed. Um, the, yeah. the, in, in more ways than one, when, you, you know, when you're performing a sacrifice, you're connecting to your own spiritual ancestors, uh, as Chris knows. You're feeding, if it's done in the temple, you're feeding the earth, you're feeding the body of the dragon as well. Yeah. But also, um, there are many um, tangents to this. I... I have empowered within the sacrifice and the beast that's going to be given over, you know, the essence of the gods. So I will call, and as instructed, Hecate or Lucifer mm -hmm. in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now these rites may sound uh, to some people, but please understand that the, the, the level of seeking of knowledge and devotion, that you know, the search for knowledge that this is done for, it's not done 
for sick kicks. I, I'm pushing 43 years old. I, I have, you know, a military and helicopter pilot skill set. This is what I do because this is my devotion to Hakate. There are elements of power that I could live without, but when I'm being asked to bring through the knowledge, there aren't many boundaries that I will not cross. Um, so there are times when for instance you can imbue an animal with the essence of the god which transmutes if you're calling it in in the correct way the being enters sometimes the animal kicks off because the power it's like it's possession you see someone flinging around depending on the type mm -hmm. of elemental they're working with or god or spirit in short it transforms the blood so if you drink that blood it opens gateways within the body and the soul because the two are linked and it is possible to travel through those gateways it's possible also to have knowledge brought through it is tremendously powerful and it's not it's not for the inexperienced and I always say this for for people maybe not people in the audience now but people who will listen to this interview at a later date okay there are two pitfalls to this even if you enter it correctly one is addiction you have to be very careful especially if you're tasting that kind of blood then you have to be pure in your motives and then you will not fall prey to that the other is and I have yet to get there because I have so much knowledge to bring through but Belial was the one who brought through to me you know the true art to the art of sacrifice is knowing when to stop <laughs> and that is it and that is it that is it. When you're no longer bringing through relevant knowledge and it's no longer necessary, then you do it just for the power. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. So um, I just want to tell you that uh, we don't know yet. So the the show will come up with your new book yeah. when you have the new. So we'll 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 kind of dance with the book. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we're looking at mid to December you know? to the third week in December. I'm trying to get it through as quickly as I can for everyone. Um, yes, no, of course, of course, yes. But you know, I'm just saying that you know, sometimes yeah. it's, it's a kind of uh, difficult. So um, I just want to thank you, Mark, for being here again. And it's always a pleasure. Always so generous of you to kind of share your knowledge and gnosis with us. Um, I just want to tell you, um, uh, all of you that are listening to this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we have almost a hundred, um, no, two hundred uh, subscribers, which is a very good number, I guess. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Just go there and click subscribe, and that that will be it. And also our um, uh, Google Plus page, um, just plus it on the top and uh, the numbers will increase. So uh, if you like the show, that's how it is. Um, so thank you so much, M uh, Mark, for being here. And Thank uh, you, and thank, everyone for, uh, thank you to everyone for coming and, and for your questions as well. And uh, so it, the, I, I just want to um, uh, finish the show, and then I w we will talk a little bit, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Uh, I'll see you on the next, um, on, the, on the black chair. <laughs>